Hi there. I'm Caleb Jones, and I'm rocking and rolling and lose my self-controller, Bob Aran, Bob, Bob. Uh, Today we're going to talk about the top 20 skills you need for both success and happiness in the 2020s. I will start in a few minutes. This is a live thingy, so I kind of wait to make sure people are, like, filing. Actually, I'm a few minutes later, aren't I, guys? Sorry. All right. Um, wow. When I'm two minutes late, three minutes late, suddenly a bunch of guys are already online. This is great. I should be late all the time. Uh, hang on one moment. Uh, sorry, I'm late. I couldn't get audio. If you guys could put in the chat the number two, if you can both see me and hear me, that would be awesome. Why do I look old? Why is this lighting make me look old? Do I look old? Do I look more masculine? <laughs> All right, hang on a moment here. Uh, yes, you can put two. Thank you, I see twos. God damn, I have fast internet. I'm in Dubai now, so my internet's a little faster. Dubai is a little, just a little faster internet than Mexico is where I was. <laughs> okay, hang on. Gotta get my slides ready. Didn't have them ready because I was dicking with uh, audio problems. Hang on a moment. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yes, the last title of my last YouTube video was incorrect. Yes. I haven't fixed it. I've been traveling and I don't care. Let's see. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I can't tell if this lighting makes me look older or more rugged. I can't tell because I got kind of the baby face going on. The sound is bad. Some one person said the sound is bad and there's an echo. Could someone else please tell me if there's an echo or not? Because it's almost always when one person says it, just him. Can you hear me okay? Or is there an echo? I'm gonna wait. Tell me if there's an echo or not. Sound is okay, not getting echo. All right. So the, whoever said the sound was bad, it's on you. All right. No echo sound is good enough. Okay. Yeah, the sound um, should be pretty good. I'm going through my iPhone again. So the sound should be pretty good. Good. All right. Picture is slightly pixelated. That is you. <laughs> That's definitely you. All right. Great. No echo. Awesome. Thank you very much. Wonder bar. All right. Um, let's wait another minute or two and I'll get started with the c -c -c content. My hands are freezing. I had a fan going over there. It was a little hot in Dubai. And so the, it's been blowing over the past two hours at my desk, and now my fingers are like, like icicles. It's great. Uh, yes, I am here. Uh, if you care, uh, I am in a hotel room. I am waiting for my apartment, my new apartment in Dubai, to close. It'll be a few days. I'm like, I'm ready to move now. I don't want to live in a hotel. I'm tired of being homeless. I've been homeless for like three months. I want to move right now. Here's the money. I'm ready to press a button, send all the money you want. I'm paying like what six months in advance. Come on. Well, it takes four, two days for this and one day for that and paperwork and bullshit. I mean, okay. At least it's faster than most other countries, but still. God damn it. Can I just get an apartment? I got to wait like a fucking week, week and a half. It's all right. I should not complain about anything. My life is so good. I should not be complaining about a thing. But anyway. Um, yeah, I'm a little jet lagged. As you can tell, my energy is lower. Yeah, I'm jet lagged today, and then because I just got flew to Dubai last night, and um, driving through driving through the city, I'm like, ah, I miss my Dubai. No taxes, no wokeism, no crime, rising economy, happy people. I'm like, ah, yes. Talk to people there. I'm like, oh yeah. I feel sorry for people who live in America, Canada, Europe. And then I went, I thought of that, and I immediately thought, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't feel sorry at all. <laughs> you know what? You can move here if you want. <laughs> I was talking to um, two guys in Dubai before I left a few months ago. Westerners who now live here like me. And uh, they were saying, so one of your services, you help people move to Dubai. So I want to help move. You help them get a residency in a corporation. They can move if they want. And they're like, man, don't do that. We don't want more Westerners moving. We don't want more Americans moving here. We'll fuck it all up. <laughs> I said, what? It's like, oh, yeah, they'll make the crime rates go up, and then they'll want a bunch of free shit, which means taxes will go up. We got a good thing going here. Oh, we want a bunch of people moving into Dubai. <laughs> oh, my God. What do I do with all my stuff? Let's see. Can I? Well, so all my stuff, I've mentioned this in prior videos, is in a storage unit here in Dubai. 
So I got a storage unit full of pink fireflies and my shit. And it's, you know, like 20 minutes from the hotel. So as soon as the apartment is ready, it's ready now. It's vacant. I mean, can I just move in? No, because, you know, that, no. Anyway, because the landlord, the property manager. <laughs> so anyway, uh, as soon as I get authorization, I'm um, just going to movers come in and move my shit in. It'll, it's a pretty small apartment. I'll do a whole YouTube video. Think about it. And then I'll be in. There you go. So, you know. Um, you, aren't you living without paying fire phone? No. What do you need a full apartment for all you, all you need is a bed and desk. No, uh, that's all I'm getting. I was going to get a studio apartment. However, sleep. So in a studio apartment, you have the windows and it's bright in Dubai. So I have to wear a thing on my eyeballs. I'm not going to do that because it's not good for your wrinkles, your skin, all that shit. So I got a, I reluctantly got a one bedroom, but I got a small one bedroom and the bedroom's going to be an office. I'm going to set up my bed, which will be a couch. I'm going to sleep on a couch. I'm a bachelor again. I'm going to sleep on a couch and it'll be in the living room area, which is tiny. And I'm going to block all the windows off. Like I did my last Dubai apartment. There's a video I did about this with that black, I forget what it's called. This is blackout shit. It's like, it's like, a, it's like tape, but it's like this long. And you just black out all the windows. I'm going to have one of my guys just black out all the windows. So I can't see shit. It's going to be really ugly. Don't care. When women come over there, this is really ugly. I'm like, I don't care. I'm here to work. As I've said, I'm going to be without pink firefly for a few months. So the next few months, I am just going to sit down and fucking work. I'm going to put my head down and work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and blow my brains out. It's going to be great. So I'm really not moving into an apartment. I'm moving into an office. It is an apartment. But it's really going to be an office with a couch where I can sleep. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm hardcore, man. All right. Um, should we get started? Maybe switch to Apple iPhones run your business. Uh, I have purchased an iPhone because it's better for the Instagram videos that I do. And so this iPhone is actually I've set up as my webcam, so I don't need to use bring a webcam anymore. It's really great. Uh, have I completely moved over to iPhone? No, but I'm going to. My phone now right here, this is my current, my main phone, which is the cheapest one I've got. So the iPhone is what I'm looking at right now. I've got this phone, which is a Nokia 5.4. It's a piece of shit. This is my main Dubai phone. I just went down and got this quickly when I moved to Dubai a few years ago. And then I have my old American. Uh, you can't see it on here. Still plug it. This is a, a Galaxy uh, like A old fucking iPhone or no, Android phone. So I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to have this as a spare. I'm going to convert this into the iPhone and convert the iPhone. I'll do that once I get set up my new apartment. I'll show Okay. Um, how much is your rent? Cheap as fuck. I will do a whole video on that. Um, I think my rent is like sixteen hundred a month. I think, and the only reason it's that high is because I have a. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in downtown this time in what they call Business Bay because I'm a businessman, so I live in Business Bay. Seriously, they have a place called Business Bay in Dubai. It's for business nerds like me. It's got a really nice view, but it's small. So that's all. That's all I want. So I want a nice view because I live in a house. You'll get a nice house a view when you live in a house. So I'm like, no, I got a house, apartment. I'm getting my view. Now kick ass. This thing is kick ass. I had a nice view last time too. Man, you look right. Uh, let's do one more question. I got to get rolling here with the content. Andrew Tate is only allowed within his country in Romania. Do you think it's too late for him to change his approaches and prevent being put back in jail? No, he could turn. I've said this. He could turn his life around. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He's a pure alpha male one point. He's like, I don't care. Ah, I'm going to do this because he, well, he doesn't want to. Yeah, that's all. There you go. All right. So you're streaming on YouTube for your iPhone. Yes, I am streaming on YouTube right now with my iPhone. All my all my YouTube videos last few weeks, all those Mexican YouTube videos I've been doing, have all from the iPhone. All my, you, most of you guys are on my Instagram. That's for a cold audience. On my cold, uh, my Instagram stuff is all iPhone. My streaming is now from iPhone. That's why I bought the iPhone. The camera's awesome. It's amazing. iPhone 14 Pro Max. It was like a $1,500 fucking phone. No. Okay. Um, I got to start with the content. I, I will answer your questions at the end. I'll do a full Q&A at the end. I promise. 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 Okay. Um, hang on. I'm getting used to my new monitor set up here in this stupid hotel. It's not a stupid hotel, but I'm in the hotel literally next door to my apartment building. I'm now looking through the window right there at my apartment building. Because I knew what building was going to get. So I made a bunch of appointments while I was in Mexico saying, okay, 
As soon as I land, I'm going to be right next door. I'm going to be all the next day. I'm going to put a fucking, you know, put a deposit down a roll. And I did. Okay. So if you like to keep asking questions, go ahead. I will answer at the end when I do the Q&A. Cool, cool. All right. Hang on. Let me do my present presentation thing. Why is this not? Oh, share screen. Okay. I'm embarrassed to say that I have a tech background, but, you know. The older you get, the less techy you get. I like I like showing my parents like how to do like you know, work their iPhones and shit. Okay. Um. All right. Let's see here. Let's see here. Um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we're good. Okay. Sorry for the preamble. Um. Today we're going to talk about what I have done is I've gone through and. I have narrowed down what what set of skills do you need today, not 1950s, okay? Today, in the 2020s, where technology is great, but that's the only thing that's great. Everything else sucks. The Western world is in a state of collapse. Other countries are doing great, some, but the Western world sucks. It's going to get worse and worse and worse, but you do have the internet. You have other, You have lots of other options in terms of location dependence and building your own business and your personal life. We'll talk about that too. So what under those scenarios or scenario, it's one big scenario. What are the top? I, I made myself whittle this down to the top 20 skills. Maybe you need 50. I don't know. Maybe you need 37. Uh, I didn't want to do a top 10. That seemed too simplistic. So I, I knocked it down to 20. So these are the 20. Go through each one of the 20. Go through why they matter. Do a QA at the end. And of course, I'm going to pitch something as always because I'm here to make money. Okay. Now, one thing. I didn't know any other way to do this. So I'm giving you a warning now for a percentage of you watching this video, either the live webinar or more than likely the replay. There will be some dating content, dating content for men in this presentation. What I normally do, as most of you are well aware, I have two brands and I keep them very separate. Because there's a lot, I have Sovereign CEO, which is for everybody, and I have Alpha Male 2.0, which is specifically for men, a certain type of men, not all men. And I keep them very separate because there's lots of people in the Sovereign CEO audience that don't want to hear about dating stuff for men. A lot of women, there are a lot of women in the Sovereign CEO audience. There are a lot of married monogamous guys in the Sovereign CEO audience. There are a lot of people who would be very offended at some of my dating topics, and I fully understand this. So that's why I keep these separate. For this particular presentation, there was no other way to do that. I'm going to have to combine the two. I don't normally do this. So I'm going to be very nice to those of you who want to hear any dating stuff. I'm giving you a warning now that's coming. Before I start talking about it, I will give you another warning so you can leave. Because there's a percentage of you who are into my business material and Five Flags material who really like that, who will absolutely hate my dating material. Like, hate it. Like, hate it, hate it. Especially if you're a man and you just got into a new monogamous relationship with a woman or a new marriage. You're not going to like what I have to say. If you are a woman, odds are pretty good you will be a little offended at some things. If you're a woman over the age of about 33, you will almost definitely be offended by certain things. Yes, there are exceptions to every rule. I have women over 33 who love my dating style. Yes. <clears throat> but just be aware uh, that I will give you fair warning on this. So you can't say you were offended because I'm going to give you warning on this before I start talking about it. And you also go, oh, he's warning me about something I'll get mad about. I'm going to listen see if I get mad. Okay, if you do that and you get mad, F you. That's on you. Yeah, because I warned you. So I'm being cool about this. Mm -mm. Okay. Someone asked, what if you're gay? Yes, it would work for non-monogamous gay people. I have a few gay people, both men and women, in my alpha tube and audience. Yes. If you're non-monogamous. If you're monogamous gay, then no. All right. Here are the 20. So the first, like, Mm, 13, 14 are for everybody, and the last few are for dudes, okay? Specific, specific kind of dude. We'll talk about that later. All right. But they're not listed in particular order. They are numbered, but when I number, I realized, my God, people are going to think this is a priority. They're not numbered in any order. They are all important, all of them. Just because something is number nine doesn't mean, oh, it's number nine, I don't need to do it. No, you got to do it. Number one, again, not in any particular order, legal tax avoidance. There's a difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. 
Tax avoidance is paying the legal minimum of taxes you are required to pay. It's what I do. I pay around four or 5% of my total income in taxes and I make pretty good money. And it's 100% legal, legal, legal. I have multiple attorneys looking at it. Tax attorneys, accountants, to make sure I'm in compliance. Tax evasion is illegal. So we're not talking about anything illegal. I said legal tax avoidance. The single largest expense of your entire life, in, if you live in the Western world, I don't know why you're living in the Western world, but okay, is guess what? Single largest expense. It's not your house. It's not your rent. It's not your college. It's not your kids. It's not your kids' college. It's not your wife. It's not your girlfriend. It's not your car. It's taxes by far, which means you need to become a little miniature expert on how to legally reduce the amount of money you pay via taxes. It's the largest expense of your life. Why on earth would you take the single largest expense of your life and just not worry about it? Uh, dumb. Okay? You don't want to do this. And as I've talked about many times, and as you have seen over the past 25 years or so, certainly since the 90s, the actual amount of money you pay in taxes is increasing. It's going up every year. And this will continue to increase all over the Western world as the West world continues to collapse. These governments are collapsing and going bankrupt and they need your cash. And they are either going to tax you or they're going to print more money and inflate your prices, which is inflation, which is another way of paying taxes to the government. A government, especially not places like the United States, have figured out, okay, if we raise their taxes, they'll get mad. But if we print trillions of dollars, which makes everything more expensive, it's inflation, they won't get as mad. They won't blame us. They'll just say, well, that's just how it works. Yeah. So inflation is another variation on taxes. Tax and inflation, you're going to pay more and more every year. Be aware of this. So that is number one. And again, that doesn't mean like only do that. Number two, time management. I teach this in my consulting practice. This is kind of important. I would, I would say that time management is probably the number one technical skill that is most responsible for my income. I know how to manage my time. I'm a time management maniac. Time management, as I've talked about in other content, is what I call leverage skill. That means that when you learn time management, start practicing it, it is one of the few skills you can learn that apply to every aspect of your life. All of the SLA, the seven life areas, talk about my main book. Most skills you learn help you with one thing. So this skill will help you with business. This skill over here will help you with women. This skill over here will help you lift weights. Time management helps you with all of those things. It improves everything, which means it's stupid to not learn it. It's one of the biggest ROI skills there is. It improves your income. It improves your health. It improves your personal life. It improves your spiritual life. Well, Caleb, how can time management improve my spiritual life? I've got a question. Are you kidding? Are you insane? Yes, it improves all those things. So you need to learn how to manage your time, manage your week, manage your day, specifically those two things, your week, and your day. Anything beyond a week has become strategic planning, which is also important. That's a subset of time management, how to set goals, how to make plans, quarterly plans, planning your quarter, etc. Okay. I talk big about, I have a YouTube video coming up soon. Is it out yet? No, I think it's coming soon. On quarterly, going from quarter to quarter is a great system, but that's in terms of planning. Execution is about the week and the day. You have to learn how to message, message. Manage this. Can you tell them jet lag? Manage this. Maybe that's why I'm a little loopy right now. I don't feel loopy. I just feel sleepy. Um, I'd love to go to bed right now, but I can't. It's uh, it's 10.30 p.m. here in Dubai. Uh, all right. Number three. This is a no-brainer. I've been screaming this at the top of my lungs for years and years and years. Sales and marketing. Sales slash marketing. They are two separate skills for this list. I decided to combine them, but they are technically separate skills. Sales is a one-on-one -on -one exchange. If I'm on a sales call with you or in a meeting with you, or a small group and I'm trying to pitch my stuff or whatever, that sales marketing is generating leads so you can just sell. Them. So marketing is lead gen, sales is closing. Now, yeah, you can do both on the internet, but you get my point. As I've written about my books in great detail, marketing slash sales is the number one paid skill you can have in any business. There are companies that sell shit. Now, they shouldn't, you shouldn't sell shit, that's bad, okay? But there are companies on the Fortune 500 list that sell garbage. Their customer service is garbage. They, they do everything wrong, <clears throat> but they make millions, if not billions of dollars a year because they don't have a market. And there are lots of companies I've seen go out of business, including with some of you, where you had a fantastic product. Your product was amazing. It was niche, it was, it was very, it was helpful. 
It was priced right. It was a fantastic. But you go out of business because you don't know the market. Or you say, well, sales, I don't do sales. I went to college. Excuse me. I went to I went to Harvard. I don't do sales. <laughs> sales is beneath me. And then you go to business. You've got to learn both sales and marketing. If you had to put my gun, gun in my head, then choose sales. Here's the next thing. All you guys worry about the economy crashing, and you should be, because guess what's coming? You will never go broke if you're good at sales. Possibly marketing, but definitely sales. If you are if you know how to sell, you know, get on the phone or get on Zoom or in real life and sell. If you know how to do this, especially credit, when you create your own leads and sell, you will never go broke. You will always have a job. You shouldn't have a job. You should have your own business. But if job or business, you will never go broke if you don't sell. You won't. It's the one skill I can say that. Can I say you'll never go broke if you learn how to code? No AI. Oops. Every other skill, you might go broke. But not if you don't want to sell. You will never go broke. I don't care what happens. Right? Shit, I'll hire you. <laughs> if you can develop your own lead. So here's the other thing. In terms of sales, there's two kinds of sales. There's order takers. We get inbound sales. And then there's outbound sales for when you have your own, you, you generate your own leads and you can close them. My God, if you can generate your own leads and close, you'll never, never go broke. Critical skill. And don't have an attitude about this. I get all these, all you listings saying, well, I don't want to do that because I don't want people to think I'm a scammer. No. Next one, investing. Making money is one thing, keeping it is the next. Investing is about keeping the money you make. If you, you need to preserve the money you make. And if you make a lot of money and then blow it all, it doesn't count that you made that money. Um, that's how I consider my 20s. In my 20s, I didn't know how to manage money very well. I, I did know how to invest to a degree. Maybe it should be called money management. I'm talking about investing here. Uh, I blew all the money I made in my 20s. And I was making six figures toward the end of my 20s. Six figures a night and $90. I'm making some good money. I blew it. Now, A, I blew it, mostly blew it on personal expenses because I was traditionally monogamously married and I was stupid and I was a kid and, you know. But I'm like, man, if I had just saved some of that money, today how much that money be worth? My God. Made a lot of money in real estate, but I spent that money too in my 20s. <laughs> so you need to learn how to invest. Now, to be clear, um, investing is one of the latter skills you need to learn. I mean, most of these skills you learn first. And then you do investing. I get so many questions from guys. Oh my God, let's look at these questions. Caleb, I have $6,000. Where do I invest? You don't. You don't need to worry about investing right now. <laughs> you need to make more money, put that in a savings account for an emergency savings account. Okay. Investing is not what you want to. These guys, I, Caleb, I have $13,000. Where do I invest it? You don't. You don't. In an emergency savings account, pay off your debt, and then you look at investing. I talked to a guy. In my audience, who's been in my audience for seven, eight, nine years, or maybe longer, he started from zero when he first came into my audience. He, this is true, this is a true story. I should, I need to get a testimony of the difference guy. Um, he now he has a business now. He is making six figures a month. I just talked to him a few weeks ago. He he's doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. He has almost a million dollars in one of his checking accounts. I won't give the exact number, but it's almost a million dollars in one of his checking accounts. And he was asking me, you know, I don't know anything about investing. Should I learn how to invest? And based on his financial scenario, I said, you know what? No, you don't need to worry about his taxes because he's a typical American guy in an American company, an American, American, American. I said, when you get your tax bill next February, you're going to be fucking furious. The amount of money you're going to have to pay out of that account to pay the IRS so they can go bomb more other countries for no reason and, you know, bail out banks for no reason. and Give people a bunch of money for not working for no reason and people who could work and don't want to. You're going to be fucking furious. So you need to figure out your taxes, bro, by the end of the year. Do the Dubai thing or something. I think he's going to do the Dubai thing. So even he. Now, here's the thing, though. He mastered these other skills we're talking about. Sales, marketing, business, time management. He kicked ass. And he started from nothing. He started, you know, just like you guys just years ago. Um, outsourcing. So here's the thing. You will never be happy in life if you try to do everything in your life by yourself. This is just a law of the universe. You will never be happy if you do literally everything, everything. If you do literally, literally every little task that you have to do, mow the lawn and 
clean the car, okay? Or you check your email and work on your website, all that stuff in your business. You will never be happy. But Caleb, I like to cook. If there are certain things you like to do, you keep doing those things. If you enjoy doing them, you keep doing them. But there's a whole bunch of shit in your personal life. And when you start your business, those you have a business, you know, a bunch of shit in your business you don't like and you shouldn't be doing because you'll make more money someone else does it. Okay? You will never be happy if you don't learn how to outsource. You'll also never make a lot of money. This is my estimate. I think I'm right about this. I have to think about this number a little longer, but I think this is right. You will never make more in your own business. Now, certainly if you have a job, you're fucked. But if you have your own business, even if it's location dependent, altitude, whatever it is, you will never. Hang on, I'm check the. Hang on a second. What are we doing here? Oh, we're good. You will never. Sorry, I'm distracted. Okay, we're good. You, sorry. You will never make more in your own business. Make more than about. $70,000 a year if you insist on doing everything yourself. I can't hire anybody to do anything because they'll fuck it up. They can't do it as good as me. Only I can check my email. I don't want someone in my email. You know, I don't want someone managing my social media. What if they push, what if they put porn on my social media and get me banned? What if this, what if that, what if this, what if that? Caleb, I can't do that. Okay, great. You will never make more than $70,000, which by the way, is under our $85,000 a year requirement for long-term consistent happiness. So you're basically fucked. Okay. And by the way, I don't want to hear this bullshit about these one man businesses. This is the new thing now. Um, and these are guys I don't dislike. I like these guys, guys like Justin Welsh, guys like Dan Coe. The new buzzword is one man business. You can make seven figures. One man. These are not one man businesses. These guys have plenty of people just like I do helping them on the back end. They're just not employees. They're doing an alpha two, but on business model. Great. I have 17, 18 people. Something like that, 20, I forget what the number is, it changes. I don't need employees. I'm still a one-man business because that's what one-man business means, okay? You need people to outsource, to get to your income goals, and to be happy. And if you don't know or don't want to learn how to hire people, learn how to manage people, learn how to fire people if you need to fire them, learn how to delegate tasks, learn how to put correct people in right seats, and the bigger your business gets, the more you have to scale, which is what I'm working on now, the better to be at this stuff, okay? Got to do it. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have a 27 people. You can have a, a business that makes 100000 a year and have two or three VAs. That's all you need. It's fine. Okay? If you need something or personal assistant, you need something. Okay? Go learn to do this. Number six, and I'm a broken record with this goddamn thing, aren't I? Niching. When you properly niche. Now, niching is a skill. It's a skill just like any other skill. In the 90 Day Business Builder, we spend a lot of time on this. We're going through this right now with two groups of people in 90 Day Business Builder. Niching, how to niche. When you properly niche, you make more money. You make it faster. You get from zero to the money much more quickly because you're niched. And you make it on less time. I'm, I don't mean less time the money, less time spent per week maintaining the money. More money on less work hours and you get from zero to the money faster when you niche. So therefore, niching is a skill that you need. And the good news is you only do it once, once per business. You have several companies you'll do a few times, but once you do it once, it's pretty easy. You know, your first business is your hardest. After that, that's gets pretty easy. Maybe you've got to learn to do this. I'm going to teach people to lose weight. It's not niching. Sorry. I'm going to teach people to make more money on the internet. That's not niching. I'm going to teach people mindfulness. Caleb, I'm going to be a mindfulness coach. Please learn niching for the love of Christ. Learn niching. You'll, you'll transform your whole life and you won't believe how, here's the thing about niching, you won't believe how easy it gets once you get that part done. Once you niche and it's a correct niche, it's a proper niche, it really is a niche. It's a niche can afford, that can afford, has money and can afford what you want to sell. Okay, once you get to that stuff, which is hard, the rest is so much easier. I tell people this is the business builder pro all the time. Guys, it's the hardest part. Once you're at the niche, and we see this over, as soon as you have the niche and you're offering it, the rest is easy. Setting up the website, writing copy, finding customers, closing the business. You know, it's the rest is easy. The rest is fun, but you've got to learn how to niche. And that's more true now than it's ever been before. In the 1950s, you didn't have to niche, okay? It was harder to start a business, but you could just start a, a you know, a generalist business, anything. And you could, you could make money if you did the correct things. Today, my God, no. Everything's over, every, everything's oversaturated. You have to niche. I talk about how fitness is oversaturated. It is more than other industries, but every fucking industry is oversaturated. This is the nature of the beast. You've got a niche. Okay. 
making on less money. I didn't mention that. Yeah, you less money in terms of investing in your business. Right. Number seven, communicating your ideas. When you learn how to communicate your ideas, you instantly jump to the top, I would say, 10% of the marketplace in terms of the Western world. It might even be 5%. I'll say 10 to be generous. When you learn how to convey your ideas, either through speaking on video or writing or audio or in real life doing like seminars and real life presentations, when you learn how to do this, Take your idea, especially if they're complex or controversial, and you learn how to convey those ideas, which most people don't know how to do, you're immediately in the top 10%. You got to learn how to sales and market and branding, all that stuff too. That's why you do all these things, not just this. There are people out there who know how to convey their ideas who make shit for money. They're called college professors, okay? And I'm not talking about that. Talk about this plus everything else. But you got to do this. Um, before I say this, a really easy, quick place to do this if you're just fucking terrified is Toastmasters. You join Toastmasters, it's like 30 bucks. We were just talking about this with one of my coaching programs the other day. It's 30 bucks, I think, 32 bucks. And you go in once a week and you, do a, and you, do a, you stand up in front of a group and you, you give a speech. It's like five minute speech and they critique it. It's awesome. I did it years ago, changed my life. Literally changed my life. It was the catalyst of oh, so many other things. Toastmasters, it teaches you how to speak publicly. And it's awesome. And they're just very supportive. They're also really cool people. You want to make some cool friends? Go to Toastmasters, man. It's awesome. All right. This is my opinion, and I'm right. All my opinions are right. You didn't know this? All my opinions are factually accurate. <laughs> this should say success in the 2020s is a typo in there. And I didn't make the typo. I never make typos. So I don't know who made this. So. Pink Firefly made this typo. I'm just kidding. I made the typo. Success in 2020s is two things. Okay, this is my opinion on this. Niched information, niched information that you know how to convey plus authenticity. We are in a, people are thirsty for authenticity right now. In a world of Donald Trump's and Andrew Tate's, in this world, people are thirsty for something that is authentic. You know, Joe Biden's, I want to pick on anybody, but in, in this world of bullshit, where it's just a wave of bullshit that just comes out of your phone and just smash you in the face every day, right? TV and movies and everything's getting worse and people are fake and stupid and just people are craving for authenticity. So if you have niched information you know how to convey, plus being real, being real, okay? What you're seeing is me. I dial up the energy level here about 20%, but those of you who have met me in real life, a lot of you have, this is me. This is not an act. I'm not putting on. I'm not, this is not a character. Everything I say, I really believe. This is all real shit, right? Um, we just finished up a course I did for some people on how to be a content creator. And, and, and we hit this thing hard about being authentic. And here's the thing people know. When you're not being authentic, people, or they will find out very quickly. It's huge right now. And so again, niched information you know how to convey plus being authentic you're there you're there that's it you just got to figure out the niche how to convey your information and then stay authentic don't be a dork that's it okay emotional control i talk about this in the alphabet 2 put on content um here's the thing and, and this there's so many applications this. i'm just going to summarize this i have entire chapters and books about this topic the entire Western world is going to continue to get worse every year. And again, you Trump idiots, you could make Trump president for life, and this would still happen. The, America would get worse and worse every year, okay? This is not about Trump or Republicans or your non-American equivalents. Or if you're non, if you're a left-winger, you could, you know, you can, you, Trump could die tomorrow and it'll still get worse, okay? It doesn't matter, okay? This is going to get worse every year, every year, every year. If you let this get to you, if you let this bother you, you will never be happy no matter how much money or success you have in any other areas of life. And I just described America right now. Um, I've been in Mexico the past few weeks. I'm in Dubai. People are happy. They're happy in Dubai. They're happy in Mexico. They're happier in Dubai. They're pretty happy in Mexico. And Mexico's right there. You go back to the United States, everyone's bitching and moaning. Everyone's pissed off. Everyone's stressed out about abortion or whatever the fuck it is. 
I know people, most of them Americans, unfortunately, but some of the people in some other countries, Western collapsing countries, who are ripped. So men who are just ripped. They look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. They're ripped and they're miserable. They're angry all the time. They're angry all the time. So they've, they've hit the pinnacle in terms of physical fitness. They're angry all the time. I know women who are tens. They're beautiful, perfect tens from head to toe. And they're miserable. Miserable all the time. It's not a woman thing. I know men like this too. I know people who make millions of dollars a year. And they're fucking miserable. Now, I know a lot of poor people who are also miserable. I'm giving you examples on you can reach the pinnacle of a certain area of your life and be miserable. I know men in, in some of the world that I come out of who are very good with women. They live amazing woman lives like I do. They're getting laid and they're all hot and they're miserable. They're angry all the time. Or you can, you can take a deep breath and learn how to control your emotions a little bit and be happy. I'm, I'm the happiest. I've said this many times. It's still true. Even with the problems I went through a few weeks ago, which are now fixed, I'm the happiest guy I know, I personally know, at any age or any income level. I'm talking about who I, people I personally know in my life, okay? I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people. There isn't one man I know at any age at any income level who is more consistently happy than me. And one of the biggest reasons is, there's two reasons. I've constructed a lifestyle that is designed for happiness, alpha male 2.0, oh, sorry, CEO. And I know how to control my emotions. So I'm going, God damn it, I don't, I don't do that. Or if I do it, a little, I catch myself. Wait a minute, this isn't helpful. Why am I pissed off about this? Let's fix it. Okay. I know it's easier said than done, but it's a skill you need to learn. Otherwise, be pissed off the rest of your life. And many countries, America in particular, are full of people who are just going to be pissed off the rest of their lives. Especially as things get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. I've detached the future of the Western world from my happiness. Both through my lifestyle and through my business structures and, and my... And, both those two things, my lifestyle, my business structures. I'm now detached from where the Western world is going. So in the next presidential election, you Americans, if, if the person you want loses, you're going to be fucking furious and I won't care. I will laugh just like I did last time and the time before that and the time before that. <laughs> How to teach. This is similar to conveying ideas, but it's a little different. In my view right now, as long as you're niched, teaching is the fastest way to make money. Teaching a niched skill, not how to lose weight, not mindfulness, these are not niched. A niched skill set to a narrow type of person or a narrow type of company, B2C or B2B. B2B is more profitable and easier. So if Billy was here, she'd be saying B2B, B2B. I kind of agree. But B2C can work too. You get from zero to the money faster. You, you niche on overdrive. So niching gets you the money faster if you niche plus teach versus niche plus sell a hard product, right? again, in the world in which we live, a world that has become micro-segmented in terms of people's interests, this is in more demand now than it has ever been in all of human history. Te a good teacher, someone to show me how to do this. I mean, almost on a weekly basis. I'm exaggerating slightly, but it's close. I need someone to teach me something especially as I grow and change and, you know, evolve and scale my companies. And I need more people to teach me stuff. I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew, I thought I knew everything when I was 17. Because <laughs> I was 17. <laughs> Number 10, health. So let me discuss using health and fitness. Matter of fact, I'll do both clips right here. I'm not talking about fitness. I don't teach fitness. I don't, need, I don't teach health either, but I have to throw this in here because there you go. Health and fitness are two different things. Health means all the systems in the body are op operating at functional levels, especially for your age. That's what health means. Fitness is the ability to accomplish, accomplish athletic tasks. So if you can bench press 350 pounds, you are fit. You may or may not be healthy. And I talk about many times. I personally know men who are ripped, men who are very strong, who are not healthy at all. The example I've given a friend of mine who is fucking ripped, ripped as fuck. He's a great guy, I love him, okay? We both run up a set of stairs at an office. I run up the top, I, I skip every other step. I'm overweight, okay? I'm healthy, he's fit. I'm not unfit, I'm pretty strong, but this guy's way stronger than me, okay? And he's way more fit than me. He's, he stood next to me like, oh my God, that guy's awesome. 
Okay, right. Now, we both walk up a flight of stairs at, at an office, you know, 12 steps maybe. I'm taking another step. At the top, I'm, I'm waiting for him. He's like, <sighs> he can't even fucking walk upstairs. So he's fit, but he's not healthy. And I know guys who are like these vegan, hippie, Portland, Oregon, Portlandia. They eat all vegan and they take all the vitamins and they do the stuff that I do, okay? But they're little pussy beta males. I could pick them with one hand and put them through a wall. With one punch, I could kill them because they are healthy, but they're not fit. So ideally, you want both. But if you have to pick one, it's health. We'll talk about anti-aging in the next segment in a, in a little bit. All right. All right. Number 11. Modifying your approach based on a changing world. This is for you right-wing conservatives. Left-wingers have their own set of problems, and they're severe. <laughs> oh, my God. But you conservatives have a problem with this. Times change. I know that sucks. I know that makes you mad. Times change. You've got to change your approach overall in terms of these changes. You can't stamp your little foot like an angry little girl and say, no. I'm going to behave like it's 1952, and I'm going to go find an 18-year-old virgin, and I'm going to be an alpha male like Andrew Tate, and it'll work. I'm going to get married, and I'm not going to sign a prenup because I'm a Christian, and that's just going to work because I know what I'm doing, and I no, can't do that. I'm, you can. You'll be unhappy all the fucking time. All over my life, I see people in personal life stuff, in business stuff, in international stuff, in dating stuff, in five flag stuff, all over the place that are furious that it used to be like this and now it's like this and they're fucking pissed. And I don't like every change that occurred. I just did a whole video on Barbie on how, you know, Hollywood sucks now and there has been any good movies for six or seven, eight years. I don't love that. But unlike many of you, I change my approach to get the results that I want irrelevant to the changes that occur in culture or the economy. Okay? Or you can sit there and say, no, no, I want it to be like I want it to be like 1950s. I'm going to be mad until it does. I'm going to be mad until Jordan Peterson becomes emperor of the United States and rewinds everything back to 1953 so I can be happy. You're fucked. You'll never be happy. Sorry. I'm sorry. And and you know, I'm not saying be a left winger. I'm not saying say there's only, you know, there's 27 genders. I'm not saying that. I disagree with left wingers more than you conservatives do. I'm a minarchist libertarian. I'm against everybody. So I'm against big government more than you are. So I'm not there. You hear what I'm saying. As things change, you modify your approach to still get what you want within a changing world. That's what I've done. Okay? Or you can stamp your little foot and be mad forever. And a lot of people do. A lot of people choose this. We have a lot of people in this live stream. Wow. I wonder if this is the most popular live stream I've done. I don't know, maybe. Number 12, mission. Talk about this a lot. This is a very big topic. Can't go to detail with this. We don't have time. The underlying meaning, sorry, the underlying meaning for your life. Why do you work? Why do you live? It's the meaning behind why you do what you do. Not the meaning of life. That's philosophical and esoteric. I'm not talking about that. Interesting thing to talk about. I don't care right now. I'm trying to help you improve, which means the meaning behind your life. What I'm doing right here with you is a core part of my personal mission. It's what I want, what gives me meaning, and what drives me forward. Caleb, I don't know what that is. So here's the thing about that. I have a new, I have a, my best book I'm rewriting right now, I'm updating, and I'm going to talk about this a lot in October when we release that book. If you're under the age of 30, you don't need to worry about this right now. It's too difficult. When you're, it's difficult enough for people over 30 to figure this out. If you're under the age of 30, don't worry about your mission right now. Focus on your goals, like your goals to your goals for your goals. Focus on those. When you're 30, if you're 30, with 30 or over, and then it's time to find a mission. Why do you live? Well, because I have to. Why do you work? Because I've got to pay my bills. Why do you live? Because my mom would be sad if I killed myself. These are not missions. I'm sorry, dumbass. What is the meaning behind your life? Yes, it's hard. It's gonna, it may take you several months to figure this out. It took me a while. And I didn't know mine until I was about 32. 32, 33, somewhere in there. You got to do it or else... You'll never be long-term happy because this is what happens when people make a lot of money and they get depressed because they have no mission. I made all this money. Well, now what? Or guys, the pickup artisty world, 
they bang all these girls and they hit 35. They go, well, now what do I do? And then become, you know, hardcore Christians or whatever. And they have, they're even less happy because they have a mission. You need bigger meaning for your goals behind just the goals. Why do you want to make a million dollars? Why do you want to make 500,000? Why do you make 100,000 a year? If it's to buy a Lamborghini, look good on Instagram, that's not a mission. I'm not saying that's bad. I think it's childish, but I don't think it's bad, but it's not a mission. What's the deeper meaning? What gives you meaning 25 years plus? That's kind of the, the time frame. It's really the whole, your whole of your life. Why would you still want to make money 25 years from now? If, or if you had all the money, what would you do? Here's the other thing. You win a billion dollars in the lottery. That might be too much. You win $5 million tax-free in the lottery. You don't have to work anymore. What do you do with your time? Once you go bang all the girls and do all the hookers and, you know, all the blow and you travel the world and you go on yachts and go, woo! Okay, once you get that phase out of your life, get that out of your system, which most people do. And if you're a woman, you'll have different versions of this. Once you, you're a woman. Once you give it all to your kids, okay, whatever the hell you do, right? Or whatever, whatever do you do, whatever it is. Whatever stupid thing you do, like be stupid, men do stupid things. Now you have another, you know, 50 years to live. What are you going to do with that? Mission. Okay. It's critical. You can't skip this if you're 30 or over. Number 13, worldwide outlook. You've got to start looking beyond your own country. Now, now thankfully, if you're watching this video, you're probably in this category, but you, some of you are still working on this. Your country sucks. In my main book, The Unchained Man, that I wrote 10 plus years ago, 10 years ago, 2012 or whatever, before I was doing Hardcore Five Flex, I said, there's a part in that book that says, your country sucks. And I say in that book, and I'm right. I don't care what country you live in, your country sucks. Why? Every country sucks right now. Years ago, there used to be some good countries. There are no more good countries anymore in the entire world. They all suck balls. They're all terrible. Some are less bad than others. Some do certain things great and other things badly. So what you do is you look for the problems your current country has by looking to other countries to fix those problems. Okay? So let's say you like America's, I was going to say movies. You can't like America movie anymore. Uh, let's say you like America's, I was going to say TV. TV sucks now. You like America's food. Okay? You like America's food. But you don't like America's taxes. So you reconfigure your life where you can go eat American food whenever you want and not be affected by the taxes. You can do that by flex. Let's say you like, you're a single guy and you like Colombian women, but you don't like taxes. You reconfigure your life to spend a lot of time in Colombia for your dating life or whatever, or you find a wife or you settle down, whatever you want to do, while living somewhere with lower taxes. Look outside of your country because there are answers that lay outside of your country. Yes, this includes you Americans who think America is perfect and will always be perfect. And right, no country is good as America. Okay, sorry, that was true a long time ago, but that hasn't been true for decades. I want to pick a new Americans. You Canadians, you people live in the UK, you people live in Australia, some of you people who live in Asia and South America. I love Asia, South America, but there's some problems in Asia, South America, isn't there? Dubai too. Before I get to the next one, Dubai. I said this, Dubai isn't perfect. There's a few things about Dubai I don't like. The weather. So guess what? I'm not here. June, July, and August. It's September. Now I'm back. If I said, well, everything has to revolve around this one country I haven't been born into, I'm dumb. That's a dumb attitude to have. And it's inaccurate. Number 14. Boy, you guys got to work on this motherfucker. Especially you younger men. You older men have a problem with some of this. This tends to be a younger man thing. But you older guys can be a problem with this too. Over dopamine avoidance, all right? There's a lot of material on the internet. I'm not going to go through all this because this is not my area of expertise, but I don't do these things. You need to avoid the addictive bullshit. There are basically four categories. Number one, weed, especially you Americans, smoking weed all the time. Smoking weed every once in a while is fine. Smoking it every day, no. Video games, spending hours and hours a day on video games. Sorry, not a good idea until you've, until you've achieved all your goals. Porn. Now, the main cure to porn is get laid more with hot girls. I almost never watch porn. I wonder why. Is it because I'm, I have all this um, emotional control and I try not to watch porn and I'm doing all these anti-porn? No. I have a lot of sex with cute women. I'm non-monogamous, so I don't need to. Duh. That's step one. But whatever. Okay? Social media. Some is Okay. Obviously, you're on YouTube or some piece of social right now watching me. I, I watch some YouTube videos. Do I watch YouTube videos all fucking day? No. Am I scrolling through Instagram or TikTok all day? No, I'm too busy working on my mission. 
a little bit of any of this stuff is okay. Even a little porn is all right. A little. I said over, over, over dopamine. Okay. And then TV, your Netflix. and your, Why the fuck are you watching TV? Are you kidding? TV sucks now. What are you doing? I guess you could watch Babylon 5. Old stuff used to be good. I guess you could do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, social skills. After sales, this is the next highest paid skill there is. You have to learn how to interact with human beings, both in your personal life and in your business life. The better your social skills are, the more money you will make. I attribute this to way back when I was in my 20s, I had a computer consulting company. I got to the number one, I was the number one I was the highest income bracket in my entire industry, in my entire region, in my 20s as a computer consultant. Past guys with engineering degrees, I didn't go to college. Past guys were like double my age. I, I mean it. I was 24, 25. They were in their 50s. Why? Was I smarter? No. Was I more educated? No. Was I better at computers? I was good, but I wasn't. Some of these guys were way better than me. Why? People skills. These guys were all nerds. They hated customers. They hated clients. They just want to be left alone and work on their computers all day. And guess who made more money? I did. Okay. Here's the other thing, too. Being an introvert is not an excuse. Well, Caleb, I'm an introvert. Newsflash, I'm an introvert. In my early 20s, I realized that being Mr. Angry Introvert, you like the typical Gen Z or today, everybody sucks. People are stupid. Everything sucks. Okay, I was like that in my early 20s before it was stylish. This was back in the early 90s. I realized pretty quick, I said, you know what, if I want to make a lot of money and I want a really hot blonde wife, which was my thinking back then, and I want to, you know, have a company and, and do well in life and, and be a happy person, I can't have this attitude. This isn't going to work. Whether or not it's true, I can't do this. I have to be able to learn to interact with people. I don't love it. It's not my favorite thing. I'm an introvert. I don't dislike it either. So I spent a lot of time in my 20s, read a lot of books, okay, practicing my social skills, and by the time I was in my mid-30s, I was pretty damn good. And the goal I've said many times is if you're an introvert, your goal when you meet new people is for them to assume you're an extrovert. Because that means you've got good people skills. An introvert with great people skills is a killer. It's a lethal combination. It's fantastic. That's what I've got. I'm a hardcore introvert with really good social skills. Caleb, what if I'm an extrovert? You're probably there. You probably need to polish a few things. Here's the thing about extroverts. You might talk too much. Shut the fuck up. You might go on and on and on and on. I know a lot of extroverts, and they're not that great socially because they go, blah, 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 and they go on and on and on. They have no social calibration. They have low EQ. They can't tell that person is like bored and waiting for them to shut up. That's not good either. Um, anyway, I could talk a lot about that, but I got to move on. All right, so really quick, and then we'll get to Alpha Male 2.0. So we'll get to the dating stuff in a second. Right now, what I've got are mini courses. They are miniature courses. It's like I'm doing a, it's a recording of a webinar like I'm doing right now on a very niche topic. It's a very how-to topic. Step one, do this. Step two, do this. They're things I've charged money for in the past. So they're mini courses. They're really cheap. They're 120 bucks. Instead of thousands of dollars, or 100, they're 120 bucks and they're cheaper right now. And so until Friday, you can get them really cheap and you can buy just the ones you want. And they cover all the 20 skills we're talking about. Go through them really quick. First one is called Earn More, Work Less, Build Your Team. How to outsource. Billy is a co-presenter with that because she's really good at this. She taught me how to do this. How to outsource your business. How to outsource your functions so that you work less and make more. Earn more, work less. It's specific skill sets on how to hire people, where to find them without employees, how to find the people, how to interview people, how to manage those people, how to remove those people, how to troubleshoot problems. Core skill, which I just talked about, right? Cut your taxes. That's my third most popular one, I think. How to cut your taxes without having to do any five flag stuff, by the way. Cut your taxes. That mini course is not a five flags course. You can stay in your country and stay there forever and cut your taxes. A lot. Like a lot, a lot. Even before I left the United States, I was wearing very low taxes compared to the typical American. Very low. There's all kinds of cool shit you can do. Step by step instructions. How to find a niche. That's probably. My fifth most popular one, if you can't afford the business builder or something like that, I go through exactly step-by-step -step instruction. I do this. By the way, all these courses, they have the audio, 
They have the video and they have a full PDF transcript. So you don't, if you can, if you would rather read it, and they have an audio if you want to watch the video, and then they have uh, the, the uh, presentation notes. So you get all four of these things for any one of these. Okay. How to monetize a blog? I have made literally millions of dollars from blogging. I talk about how to do that in the modern era today. You can still make a lot of money blogging. How to monetize a blog? That's what exactly what it is. How to start a blog with the purpose of making money. I am an expert on this. I made a lot of money from blogs. A lot of money. A lot of money. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my blog. How to write a book? I've written eight books. I can crank out a book in three months. Three months. I can write a book in three months and it'll be good. I give you specific instructions on how to write a book, how to structure it, how to get the topics, how to structure the chapters, how to self-publish it, what companies to use, how to hire proofreaders, how to hire typesetters. I go the exact process getting from zero to actually on Amazon selling your book. Hardcover, softcover, ebook, everything. I cover all that. Specific instructions. How to make money selling courses. I know a little about that. Uh, I have made as much as a quarter of a million dollars net in one week selling online courses. And this is just selling video courses. Let me say that again. I'll give the exact number. I have made $242,000 net. That's not gross. That's net in my pocket in one week. It's my, my record week in terms of selling courses. I know a little bit about this. How to film the courses, how to structure the course, how to, how to find the uh, platforms to host the course, how to sell the course, how to price the course. What's your niche? These work together. You get how to find a niche and then how to do a selling course. You can do it if you want. You get multiple of these. Location dependent selling, how to sell, how to close business, especially if you're a consultant or a service provider, something like that, over the phone or on Zoom using email, location independent selling, not driving down their office and sitting across their table. And that's not location dependent, location dependent selling skills. I know a lot about that. I have closed, um, I shouldn't give you numbers. I don't think you'll believe it. I've closed some big, big, big deals, consulting in particular, using nothing but sales remotely. I've done it without ever being at the office, never flying out there. Specific step-by-step -step instructions. How to make money in real estate. That is not my area, but I've made a lot of money in real estate. Uh, I was at a time in my life, briefly a few years, where I was making more money investing part-time in real estate than working full-time. This goes back to investing. I've made a lot of money in real estate. Not lately. Not well lately. No, I did. I bought a house a few years ago, and I, I almost doubled my money on it. So yeah, I have, I was going to say not lately, I have a, how to set up a corporation. This is me and Billy and one of my tax attorneys. We give you specific instructions. How to, this is for Americans now. Sorry. So this one mini course is for Americans only. I'm sorry. How to set up a corporation or an LLC to immediately start making, saving money on taxes. Tax avoidance, not evasion, avoidance. This is a new one. How to build outcome independence. This is the one that's the most requested. Caleb, what does outcome independence mean? How do I, what are the techniques to build outcome independence? Boom, there it is. Specific step-by-step -step instructions. Some of these mini courses have not been available until now. Some of these have been available for a while. Some of these are brand new. This is one of the brand new ones. Time management, specifically for a location-dependent entrepreneur. That's what I do for a living. I'm a time management consultant, or I was, or strategic planning and stuff like that now. But that's, I go use step-by-step instructions Again, specifically for guys who follow this life or women who follow this lifestyle. You get this right, everything else gets better. How to make money as an online coach. I have made millions of dollars coaching online. I've made a seven-figure amount. Soon to be more. <laughs> how to be a coach. How to niche. How to structure your services. How to price your services. How to find clients. How to coordinate with clients. How to service clients. All that stuff. Specific step-by-step -step instructions. SovereignCEO.io slash MC. Okay. Use the discount code 2023. That will give you 25% off until Friday night on any of these courses. 25. So it's 127 is the retail price. So 25% off that is what? 100 and, I don't know. Someone do math. Whatever that is. 90 something or 102. I don't know what the fuck it is. Okay. Um, when you go to that web page, those of you who are not interested in dating, you scroll down. It says Sovereign CEO at the top. You scroll down, and then it says Alpha Male 2.0 courses. Stop scrolling. You'll be offended. Don't go past that line. Just click the courses you want, the ones I just talked about. 
If you're offended, it's your fault. Don't scroll past that line. Don't do it. Don't do it. You don't want to look. Don't look at those. You'll be pissed. You'll be horrified. Don't. Just get the courses you need. Very important. I'm going to put a little video on this page probably later tonight. If you purchase multiple courses, mini courses, because they're only 100 bucks each, when you buy the first one, it'll bring you right back to the, the page, again, the main page with all of them. You just click the second one, and you do not have to re-enter your Visa card information. It's just the limitation of the system that they were using. You can't really set up a shopping cart for this. I wish you could. Um, we use Kartra. That's one of the limitations. You don't really, Kartra is just, just a shopping cart. So that's how it works. You can still get multiple courses by putting your credit card in just once, and this discount code will work on all of them. Okay? So Friday night, if you watch the replay of this, September 15th, that's your deadline. Cool? Cool. All right. The link doesn't work. Really? So if I go there, it's not going to work. Auburn CEO.io slash MC. It's working just fine. Stop on your end. Spell it right. You want me to put it in the chat? I'll put it in the chat. I'll also put the link in this video too, if you're watching the recording of this. Then we'll get to dating skills. There's the link. Just put it in the chat. All right. Cool? All right. Now, dating relationship topics for men begin now. If you are offended by any of this, if the concept of men having sex with girls pisses you off or offends you, please sign off now. Go to sovereignco.io slash mc. Get your mini courses. I love you. Go with God. I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. Okay. Let's talk about dating now because you're all gone now, right? Right. Those are you're offended by this stuff. Doesn't if you're a woman or you're a married guy, you're not, you're gone now, right? You're gone. I better not get any emails or any comments. I'm watching you. All right. Number 16, dating skills. You need to have a skill set if you are a man, or I guess a gay woman, I guess you would apply here, or a gay man, I guess if you're gay anything, really. You need to have the ability to bring in new quality, and those are two keywords. New meaning new women you're met. Quality meaning they're pretty, they're smart, they're nice, you like them. Okay, they're not bitches, they're not ugly, or ugly to you, ugly subjective, okay? New quality women into your life. You need to have that skill set, period. And you need to be able to do this with minimal time, money, and effort. I've been teaching this since 2009, Black Dragon Dating System. We teach this forever, okay? So you need to be have the ability to... And this is why men get depressed. This is why men turn into incels. This is why men stick with horrible marriages or horrible girlfriends because they go, well, if I break up with her, no one will, I won't be able to get laid. No one will like me. Or incels, well, I can't get laid because women are women are bitches now. I wish it was 1952. Okay. You don't want me unhappy like that. You need to do, it is a skill, like any other skill, on how to meet, get women to meet, get you on a first date, what to do on that first date, the second date, the third date to proceed to sex quickly. You need that skill set. It is a skill you need. Anyone who poo-poos this doesn't understand basic human structure, how men work and basic human happiness. Men in monogamous relationships with women who drive them crazy are not happy. Men who never have sex because they're MGTOWs or incels or whatever bullshit she's using are also not happy. If you want to be happy long-term, you need the ability, and it is an ability, it's a skill set you learn to bring women to your life. I went from complete hopeless beta male to a dating level PUA guru in about two years because I developed skills. You can't just say, well, I don't need that. Now, here's the next thing. Well, Caleb, I'm married. I have a girlfriend. Have you seen the divorce rates lately? Have you seen the breakup rates lately? She's not going to be there forever. I'm sorry. My dad thought that of my mom. He was married for 46 years. Then my mom divorced him when he was in his 70s. She's not going to be there forever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry she's not. I wish she was. That'd be great. So that means when she leaves you, 
When you finally piss her off enough or she gets bored or she changes her mind, whatever women are biologically wired to do, by the way, women are biologically wired to leave men. 70 to 80% of all divorces are filed by the female. Three-fourths of all girlfriend-boyfriend relationships are terminated by the female. Women are biologically wired to get bored or pissed off with men and go find someone new. When she does this, you're going to cry for a year if you don't have the skill set of finding a new girl or woman, whatever term you prefer, all right? It makes you happier. Then you don't worry. Oh, what if she breaks up with me? Oh, if she breaks up, great. Get three new ones. We're hotter and younger and nicer than her. Great. That's how you do it, okay? Number 17, relationship management, which is just important. Remember, these are not numbered. It's not a prayer. You need this too. Getting her is just 50%. I get emails still to this day, all the time, of player dudes, pickup artisty player dudes who get laid and then the girls never call them back. I'm like, yeah, man. So getting her is just 50%. The second 50% is keeping her, keeping her for years and years and years and years and years. And Firefly and I have been together, what, eight, nine years now. Okay? And that is typical of me. I, I have relationships that's years, non monogamous, years and years and years and years and years and years. There's a catch, though. In a way, you don't have to put up with a bunch of drama to do it. So the opposite is the guy who gets the girlfriend or wife, and she screams at him all the time and bitches and complains all the time, and he puts up with it. No, because he has this skill set. He doesn't have the first skill set. He doesn't know to bring new women in. So he puts up with a bunch of bullshit. You want long-term, happy relationships with women. In my world, you have non-monogamous relationships where it's multiple women. Either you're dating multiple women or you have one wife or girlfriend, you have FBs. How do you want to do this? So long-term, happy relationships. Long-term meaning many years, happy meaning you don't argue all the time. You're not screaming, yelling at your girls like entertainers all the time. Okay? Well, both. Or else you're not going to be happy. And you learn how to bring them in. Both. Okay? 18, anti-aging. Here's the thing. People don't realize this thing. It's kind of funny. This And this is the first time in human history, This is what I'm about to say is true. This has never been true before. Here it is. Hang on. The link only works if you add a www. Oh, really? Oh, well, can someone else try that besides uh, Ian? Can someone else confirm it doesn't work if you put a www? Because, again, when one person says something, it's almost always on that guy's end. So would somebody try that link, sovereignco.io slash mc without the www? and see if it works. I have a feeling it's going to work. Here's the thing. You, and I mean you watching this video, you, you are going to be old most of your life. Huh? Yeah. You're going to live statistically well past 80, 90s, 100s, 110s. But you're not going to be young when you're 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 or 100. You're only going to be young as an adult in your 20s and 30s, maybe a little in your 40s, and that's it. So you're going to be old most of your life. So if you say to yourself, I'm going to get laid or I'm going to have a great life when I'm young, but when I'm old, I, you know, I have guys say this, being old just sucks no matter what you do. You want, you want to have that attitude? So you want to be happy the first third of your life, the first, what, not even a third because your childhood, you can't count childhood, you can't count teenage years. So the first 20 years, you can't count that because you have no agency, right? So starting at age 20 when you move out, you're, you know, whatever. you got 20, okay, 20 going on. So you got one decade, two decades of youth. So you're going to be happy the first 20%, you know, the 20% of your life, 15% of your life, 22% of your life, and the rest is going to suck because you're old. That's dumb. Now, this lighting doesn't make me look very good, but I'm 50. I look pretty young for... Every time I tell people how old I am, they're like, what? I'm really starting to shock people now. I, I just, I have it again. I'm 51. You're 51? What? Okay. So, and I plan on looking like this for a long, long, long time. Okay? And that means a few things. I have energy to do the things I want. In my dating life, I'm still attractive enough to women of all ages, including much younger women, where women don't feel grossed out by having sex with me, because that's what happens when you get old, old. Okay? All those things. I'm happier. I have more energy. I'm healthier. I, I I like myself better when I look in the mirror, which is kind of a big thing. That's not just a woman thing, by the way. You want to like yourself when you look in the mirror. You want to look in the mirror and go, oh my God, I look like a pile of shit. Those are not happy men. <laughs> I 
I used to feel that way about myself. I look at me, I look at a pile of shit. Now I look at me, I go, not bad. Need some improvement, but not bad. Yeah, especially against, especially putting me up against the typical average 51 year old American man, kick ass. Woo! So there you go. All right. Number 19, balls. Remember, I said this was for men. All oh, the women can have these two. These are metaphorical balls. What does balls mean? Well, well, guys, here's what it means. It means structure your relationship, that your relationships, your sexual romantic relationships with women in ways that you want them, not the way women tell you they need to happen, not the way society says they need to happen, and not the way they depress your mom. You. So a few examples. If you're like me and you want to date multiple women all at the same time, then you go do that. I've been doing that for 16 years now. And I'm married. I still do it. My wife knows what I'm doing. I'm an Okay. If your society says that's not appropriate, well, that's not Christian. But your mom says, your mom says, that's not a real, if women go, that's not a real relationship. Why not? I don't give a fuck because I have something most of you don't have called balls. I do what I want. I structure it the way I want. Now I'm honest about it. So the women don't like it. They leave whenever they want because I'm honest. Here's another one. If you are in your 40s and you want to hook up with a 19-year-old, go ahead and do that. As long as it's consensual and you're not lying, legal and consensual, great. Go ahead and do that. Women your age are going to throw a fit. Tough shit. Your mom is going to be pissed. Why are you doing girls that young? That's not inappropriate. You're a sex offender. Nah, 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 nah. I said ignoring women, society, and your mom. Now, the only proviso is it has to be legal, legal and ethical. So you can't lie to women. You don't want to break any laws. Please do not do that, you morons. I get some crazy emails sometimes and crazy, well, kill, I'm going to do that. Don't do that, you moron. Don't break the law. Follow, you know, age of consent laws. You got to follow the laws wherever you are. So that, so that, 10,000 years, but it's forever, okay? But within those two, everything else women say is appropriate, you shouldn't do. Women, society, and your mother. I know guys, I've talked about this before, big name guys, big name guys, guys you would know the names too, who are in these relationships and they won't do what I'm doing or they won't do what I'm doing openly because they're worried about what their grandma would say. I'm not kidding. And I'm not talking guys from India. These are white Western guys. Well, I want, you know, I want to, I want my grandma to be proud of me. I can't do that. But you're miserable doing that. You want to do this. Yeah, it'd be awesome. But I, you know, I want my mom to. These are men who are white Western men over the age of 35. These are grown men. I can say some names, I won't. And you'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Bro, it's your life. Your life does not belong to your mother. Your life does not belong to your society. Your life does not belong to women who lecture you about what is appropriate in terms of how you should date women and how you should be married and the age of women you should date and how you should have sex. And fuck you. This is your life. Legal and honest. As long as it's legal and you're not lying to anyone, you do whatever the fuck you want, baby. It's your life. And if you say, well, I better not do that because, you know, a woman told me on a first date once that if I did that, I was I would be a pedophile. If it's legal and it's consensual and you're not lying. You're done. That's it. Okay. And I just gave you two examples. There's all kinds of crazy things I could give you, right? Non-monogamy, um, age gaps, um, um, weird marriages, polyamory, you know, if you want to be gay, I don't give a shit. I have a whole video come up about, about, about gay people. Okay, the whole thing, because I get questions about this. You live the way you want. You structure your relationships with women the way you want them. And if your mom disapproves, if women disapprove, your society disapproves, fuck them. They don't own you, assuming you're over the age of 18. If you're under the age of 18, I'm sorry. Got to do what your mom said. Sorry. Wait a few more years and you can move out. All right. Lastly, number 20, not being a little bitch. Men are the weakest they've ever been. And they're going to get weaker. And weak men are not happy. Let me say that again. Weak men are not happy. Weak men don't make money. Weak men have shitty personal lives. Weak men are usually not very physically fit or, ha or healthy. They have very little energy. Weak men suck balls. Don't be one of them. And you can choose to not be weak. 
If you're a weak guy, and there are some of you out there, you told me, if you're a weak person, choose, make some changes, and get strong. I used to be a goddamn pussy. Many years ago, it's been a long time now, but I was a pussy. Pussy. With a capital puss. I chose. I said, this is going to work. I don't remember when I made the decision. Somewhere in my 20s. I said, this, okay, this is going to work. Me being a pussy is, me being a nice gentleman pussy is not going to work. This this will not work for me. This is not going to make me happy. This is not going to design the life I want. I'm going to have to toughen up. If you don't like the word alpha male, you can pick some other word. Tough guy. Whatever you want, man. I don't care. Don't get hung on the terms. All right? Here's the beauty. Men are so shitty today, it's easy to be not shitty. My dating life, there's things I've pulled off in my dating life the past four years that I would not have pulled off nearly as easy, maybe not even at all. I think I would have still done them, but it would take way more time and way more effort. And I would have been, I might just say, oh, fuck this. If men were all strong like me. If I was the norm, if me and Andrew Tate were like the norm of men, boy, that'd be hard. But they're not. Weak little pussies are now the norm. And so, boy, talk about, you know, when you talk about things like getting laid with really attractive women, like tens, it's the easiest it's ever been because so many men are little bitches, including men with money, including alpha male 1.0s, including men who are physically fit and ripped. So the biggest pussy betas there met are big fucking ripped guys in the gym with shaved heads. You think they're all badass and you're like, oh my God, you're a little bitch. Yeah. You don't want to be one of them. All right. Sovereign CEO. Dot io slash nc and there's been some conflicting information about whether that link works with the www if it doesn't work put the www in front of it i guess so let me go over some mini courses that are now for the alpha male 2.0 for you men again if you're not one of those people you're not here anymore right you're gone you've left so you're not be offended because you're not here right all right get older look younger specific techniques and anti-aging I've overviewed anti-aging in my YouTube. This is specific shit. I showed you, I show you like what I do with my skin. I show you everything. Specific stuff. Medical shit. Good shit. Yes, the, the discount code works on all these courses more than once. Yes. Convert your monogamous relationship to open. I've been training men on how to do this for years. I've personally coached many men through this with very high success rates. If you are a man who lives with a woman in a monogamous marriage or relationship, this course will show you how to convert it so you can keep her and start sleeping with women on the side. I've coached through many men. I want to say hundreds. That's probably the number. Through this process, and it works. I'm one of the only people, or probably the only person on earth, talk about niching, who can show you how to do this. You can do it. Don't think you're stuck. How to get her back. I don't like this course, so I think it's needy, but you guys asked for it. So I have a specific course now on how to bring women back who have dumped you. I have a 94% return rate for women who leave me. The women I've had sex with more than twice, they leave. I have 94% come back. Only 6% don't. Most men are the, op, the inverse of this, including pickup artists, players, guys who teach dating skills. Their return rates are fucking awful. 10% at best. I got 94. Specific techniques on how to make this work. I have a specific system for this. How to handle relationship drama. So you who are in a serious relationship, MLTR, FB, no, MLTR, OLTR, girlfriend, wife, how to manage relationship drama with a woman. I'm an expert at this. Step-by-step -step specific instructions. This is relationship management. We talked about this. How to have an effective first date. This is probably one of my favorite ones. This literally goes through step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, and then don't do this. Don't say that. Don't say this. Don't do that. Make sure of this. I am an expert on first dates. I have been on literally hundreds of first dates. I know I can do this in my sleep. This is a very specific technical process. Okay. And by the way, it's without lying, without being a dick. Because if you're a dick, your first date won't work. Or if you're lucky, you're a dick, your first date works, you hook up with her and you'll never see her again. Sugar daddy dating. Those of you who are older men who make high incomes and you're very busy. Let me say that again. You're an older man with a high income and you're very busy. This is an option for you. I do some of this. 
I have specific techniques on this, how to reduce the price, how to negotiate, all that stuff. Okay. You younger guys, don't buy this course. Okay. If you've got plenty of time in your hands, don't buy this course, please. It's for men who are very busy and it makes financial sense to do this. Okay. Next level sugar daddy game. This is new. Some of you missed this one I did a few months ago. This is how to hook up with famous women, Instagram models, and tens. Specific instructions. I, I was tempted to not talk about this, but I did. So those of you who missed that, it is now new. It's available. If you want to go after like the Instagram models, tens, it is a form of sugar daddy game. It costs money. But if that's something you want to do, if you get that mini course, I strongly suggest you get the Be Effective Sugar Daddy Dating course as well. You should get both. If you don't want to do that, just get the normal Sugar Daddy course. Okay, but if you want the if you want the Instagram model one, you need to get both because they kind of tie together. Okay? Yes, the discount code 2023 works on all these until Friday. Referral game. This is the only place I teach this, and I am the only person on the internet that I know does this. <clears throat> how to hook up with women using other women you're already hooking up with. So you meet a woman, you start dating her, okay? okay? She helps you hook up with her cute friends, cute coworkers. If she has a cute sister, I've done all this. Many, many, I have a specific system for this. I've been teaching this for more than 10 years now. It works shockingly well, and it's easier now than it was before because, again, like most men, this goes on overdrive if you're combining this with Sugar Daddy Game or you're doing this outside the Western world. If you're doing this like in South America, my God. If you throw Sugar Daddy Game in the mix, my God. You don't need to. You can be in your normal Western country and this will work. I'll show you specifically exactly how to do it. And this is the only place on the entire internet where I talk about this. I think I have one chapter in one of my books that overviews it. I don't go into detail. This is where I'm going to do this course. 100 bucks for Friday night. The price goes up. All right, sovereignceo.io slash MC. Use discount code 2022. Expires Friday night, September 15th. I will do Q&A now. Really quick, I'm going to repeat this one more time. When you go to that page, you order, if you want multiple courses, you order the first one, you put your credit card in, it processes the order, it's going to take you right back to the main page again. It's not going to say, thank you, your order we've received. It's not going to say that. You'll get an email immediately. Then you click the next course that you want. You plug in the discount code again. You will do not have to plug in your Visa card information again. It re will remember. You just keep ordering all the courses you want. And they're all on one page. There's a Sovereign CEO section. There's an Alpha 2.0 section. You just boom, 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 boom. Get all the course you want. You got a, one transaction per course. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. That's how it works. Okay. The discount code works for all the courses. I don't think I'm going to do this again. I don't think I'm going to do this particular, particular kind of thing where I'm doing the mini courses because they're already really cheap. I don't like discounting them. I'm betting that enough of you will buy multiple courses where it'll make, more, it'll make it worth my while. I don't think I'm going to do this again. This is the last time. Okay, You get the courses, but not for the discount. 25% off. Cool? All right. Okay. Should we do Q&A? Let's do Q&A, shall we? Scroll to the top here. Go ahead and type your questions in the chat. Let's see here. Uh, hang on. Trying to find where I missed the questions. Here we go. Caleb, do you know black guys having a comfortable dating life in Dubai using online dating? I, there are not, uh, I'm sure there are statistically. There are black guys here in Dubai, not a lot. A lot of guys from Africa. Um, haven't met so many do well in the USA. I imagine Dubai is even harder. Dubai, yeah, I mean, as I've said many times, if if dating is your priority, Dubai is not the place for you. It's not. It's not. That's if, if business, money, taxes are your priority. Can you date in Dubai? Yes, I could. If I was single, I could find a girlfriend here. It would take time, but it's harder. So I don't recommend it. You want to go to like South America. My son is half black. He kills in Mexico. South America, he killed because they don't think he's black. He kills. He kills. So.
Let's see, some of you making comments here, which is great. I'm trying to find questions. Uh, hang on. Caleb is the happiest guy in the manager for sure. Probably, and that's unfortunate. I shouldn't be. I should. I think I'm the only happy guy, it feels like. What do you think 2002 will bring, the good and the bad? Very complicated question. I will probably do a video on that. What brand model laptop used to run your business? I have a... Uh, what do I have here? A ThinkPad X1. I have top of the line. I buy top of the line shit. Um, yeah, am I going to switch to Apple laptop? I am tempted for my next laptop. I just got this a while ago, so I'm going to go for a while. I'm tempted. Those, those MacBooks look fucking great. So I'm really tempted to do that. I've been a Windows guy my whole life. My whole life. Going back to Windows 2.0 because that was what I did for a living. So I'm just emotionally, but I probably, yeah. Is being a therapist good location dependent business? Obviously, ensuring it's niche down. Yeah, I mean, um, it's not my favorite because you're selling hours for dollars. But to get started, yes, I would have you branch out to other things. Be a therapist, niched, location dependent, yes, and then branch out to courses, books, things like that. Yeah, sure. Never be niche though. Hey, bro, you can get Mexican and Brazilian citizenship easier if you have kids. I just said that in my Mexican video. Yes, I know. Correct. I have two FBs in both countries. Do you think it's ethically fine for me to have kids with these women for citizenship? Um, it, here's what's ethical. You engage in relationships with women and you're honest about it and it's legal. So if these are legal adults and they're cool doing that with you and you're telling them I'm going to have another kid in, in Columbia, sweetheart. You're upfront about everything you're doing? Of course. It's also, then ethics is not an issue. Ethics is an issue if you hide things from people. You know, I've talked to guys who want to have kids with women all over the world. They talk about ethics and shit. You know, if the women are cool with this and they know you're doing it and they know that you you, you don't have a high income, so you're not going to be sending a lot of money every month. And they're like, cool, let's do it. Great. If they're not cool with it, you don't do it. Which means you got to tell them, you got to be honest. I've had some women in my life, including lately. Ask me for some pretty insane shit like that. And they know, but they know everything I'm doing. So I think legal tax avoidance becomes a lot more important when you are a high income. Yeah. That yes. Well, high income, yes, over 85,000, 100,000 year. Yes, correct. At this point, it's not a big priority of mine. Correct. But you will have to hit this unless you're always going to make 50,000 a year the rest of your life. Make sense? Are you talking to the other guy? He's black, 7.5 as social proof. Hey, man, the coolest black guy on earth is, is Lucario. That guy's the shit. How would you state your business niche? For sovereign CEO, people who want to internationalize the lives for very little money, who don't have to be multimillionaires like Andrew Tate. Excuse me, Andrew Henderson. Too many Andrews. What do you think about offering forensic accounting services to divorce attorneys in the United States as a niche? Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. LinkedIn ads consultant for French B2B SaaS companies with high customer value. Is that niche enough? LinkedIn ads. Yes, that's niche enough. Yeah, pretty good. You guys do good here. I rarely ever get pissed. And I surely don't stay pissed. But I got other negative emotions like loneliness that do stick around. Yeah, loneliness is a huge one. Loneliness is an epidemic now. You know what's funny? I, I wrote a blog article about this. This is the, this is a truthful. I'm telling you the truth. I have not felt lonely, the emotion of loneliness, in about 25 years. The last time, and I'll add to that, the last time I felt lonely, I was married to my first wife. So you can feel lonely being around people all the time, having a girlfriend or wife or kids. I had a wife and two kids. I felt lonely. And that's the last time I felt lonely. That was somewhere around, um, let's see, late 90s, early 2000s. That's the last time I felt the emotion of loneliness. I wouldn't even know what that would feel like. I wouldn't know what it'd feel like. Here's another emotion that I literally don't know what it feel like. Boredom. I'm shocked that people are bored. I'm shocked that people actually are bored. I don't know what that feels I haven't been bored since I was probably, oh God, eight, nine years old. I was a little kid. 
I don't know what that feel like. There's so much shit I got to do that I want to do. Boredom, that is just an alien concept to me. What's your opinion on Maui? It's beautiful and massively overpriced. I would say that guy is not overall fit if he's out of breath on the stairs. He's just strong, which is part of fitness, but he's not good fit in a comprehensive way. He's weak in the cardio. That is exactly what I said. He is not healthy. He's fit. Fit means you can accomplish athletic tasks, and he can. He can bench press more than me, so he is fit. Can he do every athletic task? No, he can't. Would you consider John Alfie Lifestyle an Alpha Male 1.0? Yes. Uh, let's see here. Looking through the questions. I'm a technical savvy businessman. I execute well. My pitfall is ideas. I have parking lot cleaning and corporate agriculture. So much opportunity. Where's the silver bullet? I don't understand your question. Um, if you could rewrite your questions, you could help me out. I don't understand your question. Is blogging really effective anywhere at such a low bar to entry? AI can generate 5,000 blog posts in five minutes. Is it any good? Look up Justin Welsh. The guy makes millions of dollars a year, and he, and he doesn't do any video or audio. He just blogs. Why not have your residence in the country where you have citizenship? Because they will tax you more, and they, they, are, they are subject to more laws. Why have multiple citizenships if you will never have one of these countries as your residence? For travel purposes or backup purposes. You don't need multiple, you need two. What if your current country starts doubles your tax rate? What if your current country, there's a pandemic and they don't let you leave? You say, okay, hang on. Use your other passport and you can leave. What software are you running your laptop to the presentation slides your live stream? I believe in simplicity. So what do you think I'm using? Google Slides. You are very well informed about what's going on in the world and where it's heading. What news sources do you check regularly, if any? Uh, I don't regularly check the news. I keep an eye on the news just because I'm an investor. I'd rather ignore the news, frankly, because it's all stupid. Um, what I do is I look at right-wing sources, left-wing sources, and if I can, libertarian sources. And I also try to look at American sources and non-American sources. Then I get the full picture. If you just watch Fox News, you're an idiot. You're getting one side of the story. If you just watch or read Huffington Post or something, you're just, you're just as stupid. Okay? If you watch the MSN, you're stupid. If you just watch Alex Jones, you're stupid. Well, you need to watch all of them, unfortunately. And then you get you get the different pieces. And you go, ah, oh, here's the real story. Is the course cut your taxes aimed at U.S. residents or is useful in any country? Any country, there are one or two American-only techniques in there, but it's for any country. The only, the only one that's American-centric is the corporation one. Does the course, How to Find Your Niche, give different information from the Alpha 2 business course? Yes, more information on that topic. Yes. All right. What are the best lead sources that you have? You're talking to me? Best lead sources. Well, I have many, and I have several companies that you need more specific with your question. Who are good coaches for high income earners like yourself? We have you, but who do you have, if you don't mind me asking? You mean, who do I use for my coaches? What are good coaches for high income earners like yourself? I don't know if I want to say them their names publicly at the moment. I will. I want to get their permission because I teach some controversial shit and I always try to be sensitive to this because I've had people pass saying, I love you. I'll work there. I'd rather not be associated with, blah, 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 with your non monogamy shit. I don't think this these two people would give a shit, but if they give me permission, I will do. You know what? Uh, if this guy is willing to do this, I'll have him on. I'll bring him on my YouTube videos. My main coach, very wealthy, very successful. Uh, just the other day we were talking. He doesn't do it for money because he coaching is his mission. He wants to build, he has his goal like to build 500 
multi-gazillionaire CEOs. That's his goal. He has more money than God. He doesn't need to work at all. He has hundreds of millions of dollars. So I'm coaching with him. And um, so if he if he's cool with it, I might have him on. But I have to get his permission before I talk about it. The link you post in the chat works, but doesn't work for me just typing it in. Yeah, I must have something to www. I don't know. That's irritating. All right. Oh, then someone else says work for me. So some of you, the link, if it doesn't work for some of you, put www in front of it. Some of you apparently don't have to. I've run into this problem in South America. Certain links will work in a certain way in South America, and then you go outside of South America, and they work fine. So I know that there is regional differences with these goddamn links. <laughs> Wish I wasn't. Some of you guys talking about dating. How else would dating get harder in the 2020s? Harder. Well, <clears throat> hang on a sec. Also, how will it get easier? I find it more alcohol dependent when women set you apart. What else would set you apart? Okay, so I'll just focus on easier and harder. It's getting easier because men are more pussified. It's getting harder because women are more strong and picky. That's how it's getting harder. So women's standards, which is an amazing social dynamic, and one of the many reasons the Western world is collapsing for our eyes. Men are getting worse, and women are expecting more. Good luck, folks. You guys are fucked. That's why both men and women are both fucked. They're both fucked. Men are turning into women pussy babies, and women are turning into, well, I want a man who's this and this and this and this. and this. Like, are you insane? You're insane. <laughs> In general, it has gotten easier. Although I realize I say that from a position of high S and B. So maybe my perception is skewed. But I show a lot of you guys that I do these things. A lot of you guys are kicking ass. Especially you guys who are five flags in it. Dude. So, there you go. Um... Do you ever worry about hitting on girls as a content creator? I don't hit on girls. E.g., a 19-year-old, a 50-year-old, and she tags you, Instagram shame you. you I'm sure you'd lose some customers if they saw that. Uh, a, I don't hit on girls. B, I'm not coming to pin I don't care. C, I've literally never had a problem. There are women who on first dates have Googled me, and they find all my shit, and we still have sex, and they're fine. I, I just know. It's, it's not a worry I've ever had, and I will never have that concern. You know what? I would make more money than I lost. I would make more money than I want customers. Here's another thing. I've been asked for this. Caleb, have you ever lost customers from your consulting or other, your real business businesses from your stuff? Yeah. I mean, no. The answer is no. Uh, I had a guy years ago try to get me fired from companies. And he sent him links to all my Alpha 2.0 dating stuff and all, the, you know, having sex with girls. No one gave a fuck. They think it was interesting. Matter of fact, two or three guys like, that's really interesting. How do you do that? <laughs> so no, never giving a shit. Don't worry. Seems like Gen Z women want their boyfriends to be betas. All women want their boyfriends to be betas. It's called betasation. I talk about this in my books. Do you think Gen Z women will produce more ASD if they perceive to be more alpha? No. Gen Z women are like all women. They bang alpha males, but when they want a boyfriend, they need a Mr. Beta. When they want a boyfriend or moving the guy or husband, that's got to be a beta. But when they're dating and having fun, it's you. Does the discount code work more than once? Yes. All of them. For guys just turned 30 or 35, is it a super advantage dealing with much younger women if you look young? It, it's it, No, it's not. It, it doesn't hurt or help if you're in that age range, no. And it's a good sign about your parents if girls always ask how old you are. Sure. Yeah. It means you, here's the thing. It means as you get older, it's going to be a huge advantage. True story. I think I mentioned this once. When I was in my early 20s, there was a girl I had total one eye as far as totally in love with her. We we're going on dates. We never had sex. I went, and she was a few years older than me. And she was, matter of fact, she was, I was 20, I don't remember now. She was 30 and I was 24 or something. She was cute. And I was, you know, I was a beta male back then. So I'm like, oh, I love her. Okay. She gave me this little lecture, and she was am amazingly prescient. She said, Caleb, here's the deal. Right now, you look like a baby. 
You got a little, little baby face going and, you know, okay. However, Caleb, she said this. When you're in your 40s, oh, no, 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 let me put this in context. Okay, I got to run why. She said, okay, because I want to date her and get serious. She goes, okay, let's say we start dating, okay? And let's say we get really serious. Okay? And let's say we get married because she was in her 30s. That's what she's thinking about now, right? Early 30s. She goes, okay, so far, so good. Great. Here's the problem, Caleb. You have a baby face. So right now, hmm, okay, but here's the problem. Let's fast forward several decades. You're in your 40s. You're going to look so goddamn young. All the women you'll be looking at are the hot, like, 19-year-old, 20-year-old, and they will be looking at you because that's what women like the best, men in their 40s who look young. She said all this. She said this 35 years ago, whatever, okay, 30 years, whatever, at home. She goes, then I will be a woman in her 50s. So where does that leave me? All you're going to be doing is trying not to cheat on me. We go out to a mall. You'll be staring at all these girls' asses. I'm going to be like old in my 50s. You'll be in your prime and looking good. That's why we can't get married. She said this. And she was right across the board on the entire thing. <laughs> what you understand is, and I know this back then, what I, if, th if this has happened several years in the future when I was at Alpha Tupin, I said, well, sweetheart, we'd be non-monogamous. I'd have them on the side, but you'd be my wife, which is what I have now. <laughs> uh, I still remember her talking about this. It was so funny. Um, wait, which book tells you all the MLTR, OLTR types, how to marry, rules, how to marry? I don't remember being on Unchained. No, that is uh, that is a book, not a course, that is called the Ultimate Open Relationships Manual at HaveOpenRelationships.com. IG dating course. Not exactly. It is how to date Insta famous Instagram models. It is not how to use Instagram to date. No. Although my uh, online dating book does talk about Instagram a lot. Called Online Dating Success for the 2020s. We have specific techniques in there of guys who've done this. If you if you get to mine and end up running out of time, I prefer you answer the first one. Well, then copy and paste it if I didn't answer it. Will you do any more videos on all video platforms on topics? Not a lot on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We keep the page up after September 15th. Yes, this page will be up forever. And we will add new courses as we add them, but you won't have a discount code anymore. What do you think was the last good movie to come out? Avengers Infinity War. So what year was that? 2016? Well, when was that? Matter of fact, let me Google that really quick. Not Endgame. Not Captain Marvel. Okay, Avengers Infinity War. 2018. Okay, and that's an exception because 17 is when they stop. There's a few good movies that have come out. Everyone pulls out the except, well, kill. what about Top Gun Maverick? Yeah, okay, there's one. Just 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you would have 30, 40, 50 amazing movies a year. Now you have one every several years. Every, every one or two years, you get a Top Gun Maverick. Then you wait two more years, you get a Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah, the exception proves the rule. One movie every year and a half? I mean, literally, every, this is a routine I had for most of my adult life. All the way up to like 2013, 14, 15, I would sit down, look at the movie schedule for the year in December, and I'd map out all the movies I wanted to see, and then and I, I see them all, and then I pick out all the ones I want to buy DVDs for. And there was tons of them per year. Now it's one every other year. Yeah, it sucks. Western Collapse. Where does Josh live in? He is in New Mexico. Thailand slash Europe. Like Portugal, cheap Europe. Spain, Portugal. How does an alpha male 2 address therapy and how to find a therapist? Well, um, I recommend that you find a therapist who is a man. You don't need a man, but I think for these kind of issues, I think you should. <clears throat> uh, just, just to remove that variable. There are women therapists who can help men. Absolutely. Um, I know some of them. They're amazing. But just to remove that variable so you can be comfortable talking about this shit, a guy. And same thing with therapists. Same anyone you hire. Rule of three. Interview three of them. The first one you pick will probably suck. You'll have to fire them after two or three sessions. 
and you get the next one, he will probably suck. And you get the third one will be the truck. I want to monetize a podcast. Do the same techniques apply to the blog? Yeah, similar. I would say about 50%. What is the success rate of the nine-day business builder program? How long does it take to 85K per year? So we haven't been doing it. We've only been doing it a year. So we haven't followed people up for a year yet. There's a few. Success rate, most people in any coach, I've said this many times, this is true. Most people in any coaching program don't finish the program. They choose to quit. This is of any coaching program in the entire internet. So the vast, not the vast majority, the majority don't make any money because they stop doing it. As a matter of fact, I just told the people who just signed up in our program the last two months. A lot of you aren't going to make it because you're just going to decide to not do it. Of the ones who do actually do everything, I don't have the statistical numbers. I should probably get them from Jeff. Um, we just had a guy who got, let me think a minute, $13,000 from his second customer in that program. 13 grand from his second customer. From one customer, 13 grand. Mm. What do you think about dating girls on Facebook to game them and get dates? What do you think about D oh, DMing girls on Facebook? Not Facebook dating, just DMing them straight up without a friend request. No, that does not work. That is more likely to work on Instagram than Facebook. Facebook is a very, who are you? You're not my friend, fuck off. You're talking about MySpace back in the MySpace days where people are excited to get a DM. No. Your email is a treasure chest of good info. Cool. You discussed rule of 33. It's the 33 time for the peers, 33% with a mentor, 33% with your mentors. Oh, people you mentor. How do you choose your mentors? I'm very picky with my mentors because they have to make more money than me. I mentioned this. Can you find a mentor who has a better woman life than me? Nope. So I'm kind of out of luck on that, although I don't need a mentor in that area. Um, I, you have to have achieved. Oh, so if I want a physical fitness mentor, you have to be, you have to have been very overweight and now you're ripped. If you've been ripped your whole life, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. So things like that. If you're going to mentor me on business, you better make way more money than me. Way more. And, and you better not be working 50, 60 hours a week because I live that lifestyle. I, I'm not going to want you for the rest of my life. So the mentors I have in my, in my business life, are guys who make a shitload of money and they don't work very hard. Shitload meaning way more than me and I do pretty well. And I mentioned this. The more money you make, the harder it is to find coaches because coaches at the super, super level, they're making too much money. They don't want to coach. They don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Fortunately, I found one, but it took me a goddamn, it took me two years to find him. You mentioned certain alpha and one point behaviors lead to unhappiness. But what alpha, what 1.0 behaviors are helpful in the current dating market? All the behaviors that alpha male 1.0s have that are helpful in the current dating market, alpha male 2.0s also have. So that is an irrelevant question. There is no advantage the alpha male 1.0 has over the 2.0 in terms of, well, alpha male 2.0s, the good thing about them is they have this. Everything they have, the 2.0 has. The 2.0 is an alpha male who is happy. And an alpha male who is outcome independent doesn't give a fuck. It's only difference. Let's see. Hang on. Can you talk more about the second part of starting a business, market research? I don't prefer market research. I prefer niche research. So in the 90 Business Builder Program, we don't have anyone do market research. We do niche research. You narrow down a niche, and we show people this in the, in the 90 Business Builder Program. You narrow down a niche, which is hard, okay? Then you talk to five, six, seven, eight people in that niche, either through DM conversations or phone calls or emails or whatever you want to do, okay? Real people in the niche, and you say, What is your biggest problem? And you shut up and listen. And if you have three, four, five, six, seven people give you some consensus, there's your business. If they all say different things, probably not a great niche. We had one guy, this is really funny, um, in the business building program about two months ago. He did this. This is rare. Okay, this doesn't happen very often. He found a niche. He talked to five, six people, business owners in the niche. It's like, what is your biggest problem? And they all said, you know, we're not having problems. Everything's pretty great. <laughs> well, guess what? Not a great niche. <laughs> it was a great niche. Couldn't find a problem. You want a niche who's dissatisfied, angry, and pissed about something they need to fix. That's the niche you want. What was your niche in the construction industry? What was your niche in the biotech industry? Well, I wasn't niched. It was the construction industry. This is back when I wasn't niched. 
This is years ago when I was not niched. So I wasn't niche. I had biotech construction and sports. Those are not niches. So I didn't know what I was doing back then. I still made six figures because I worked hard, but you should have made a lot more. U.S.-based trucking companies with under 500 employees niched enough. I would not choose a trucking company as a niche with AI coming on board. I would not do it. That's not a good idea. Those are the first guys to lose their money. I mean, unless you're selling AI, self-driving trucks or something. I don't know if I would do that. That'd be a very complicated niche. But uh, is it niche enough? Not quite. You need one more level deeper and then you're there. But I wouldn't choose that. My son is my son will turn 15. He's already ambitious to start an online business. He prefers not to be on screen in person at YouTube. What would you suggest? You can make, and I'm not I'm not good at this. You can make YouTube videos um, without showing your face. There are big YouTubers who never show their face. Now, I'm not very good at organic YouTube. I'm terrible at this. So don't ask me how to do that. But you can. It's just better if you show your face. How long does it take to get another passport? And do you need another passport to stay out of the West from being from the U.S.? And what's the soonest you will not be able to get out of the U.S.? Okay, you don't need another passport. I just did a YouTube video about this. Maybe that's what you're asking about. You don't need a passport if you want to leave the U.S. I left the U.S. I don't have an, I have a U.S. passport. Um, that is to protect yourself in case you can't leave. You're there. There's a pandemic or war or collapse or coup or a shitty president. Now you can't leave which is very much in the realm of possibility of the United States and many European countries. And God damn it, Canada too. My God, probably more so than Canada, more in Canada than the United States in terms of risk. That's in the second passport. Um, how long does it take a second passport? It depends on how you do it. If you want to do citizenship by investment and you have $150,000, it takes four months. If you want to do it on the cheap, you're going to need to move to a country and sit your ass there for at least three years, three, four, five years. Then you can get one. Or if you have ancestry, that's going to take you two or three years of fuck around with the courts and shit. It's a several year process. What about hitting on girls on Twitter and trying to game them? No, stop trying to hit girls on Twitter and Facebook. That is not going to work. No. How would you state your niche for your location dependent business? I just did earlier. How many meals do you eat a day? How long for each meal? Right now I do about four. I eat, uh, here's an example. This is the American version, okay? So I have these from the United States because I was, no, I got these from, well, yeah, I did a layover in Houston, Texas, away from uh, Mexico. In Dubai, they're called naked bars. So it's like three, four ingredients. It's nuts, fruit, and egg whites mashed together. And then I'll have cottage cheese if I don't have egg whites. And that's pretty much the staple of what I eat. I eat other things, but that's pretty much what I eat. About three, four times a day. I'm trying to figure out how to not do that, though, because it's a pain in the ass. I just get hungry a lot. That's my thing. I'm hungry all the time. That's my issue. So even when I do 100% keto and even when I fast and I've tried everything, trust me, I'm just a hungry guy. Let's see. Um, Kayla, when you were dating and building your business, I remember you said you keep many friends. That is incorrect. I don't have a lot of friends. I'm an introvert. Did you get many questions from MLT women about this? I want to meet your friends. No, I did not have, that is incorrect. I did not have many friends. I've never had many friends. I'm an introvert. I'm not a big friendship guy. Do you have any tips on how to combat limiting beliefs? Yes. I think my subconscious is entirely on my side when it comes to reaching my goals. You attack one at a time. Limiting beliefs means you have several. You pick the worst one and you bombard that with meditation, visualizations, and that, you know, that priming shit that Tony Robbins does, because I mean, like, you know, getting in a state, all that shit, but one at a time, not all of them. You pick one, you forget all the other ones. What's the worst limiting belief you have? And you focus on that. You bombard the shit out of that. That's why I've done. Do you find black women prefer alpha male one panos compared to other races of women? It's not just black women, it's all non white women. So Hispanic women, black women are more attracted to overt alpha male behaviors. Yes. I just came from Mexico. That's a very macho culture. Yeah, right. Which cities in Mexico do you and your son favor the most and why? Thank you. Uh, my son, don't ask him. He likes a lot of different cities. He lives in Guadalajara. I don't know if that's his favorite, though. Uh, Guadalajara is by far my favorite, by far. Um, 
I mean, I like Cancun, but it's a, you know, it's a touristy place. Uh, there are parts of Mexico City I like, but Guadalajara is my favorite. He's a much more, he's a much bigger, I should get him on one of these videos. Um, he's a huge expert on Mexico. I should have him do a Mexico video. I should have Josh come in here do a full deep dive Mexico, go for this city for that, and that city for this, because we're doing get residency in Mexico right now. Sovereignco.io slash Mexico GR. Best lead sources you recommended for getting pussy slash lays. There are four types of game. You pick one. There's no right or wrong way. It depends on your personality and your age and how and your job or your work. Night game, meeting girls at bars and clubs at night. Day game, meeting girls during the day at like stores and malls and crap like that. Online dating, which is my favorite because most time management is easy, time management friendly. But the problem with online dating is you can't exactly see what you get. You got to hope the videos are right or the pictures are right. And then social circle game, meeting women through people you know. You pick one of those four and get really good at it. That's the secret. You don't do all four. You pick one based on your personality, your age. Can I do night game as a 51-year-old businessman? No, I can't. It wouldn't make any sense. Okay, So I'm not going to do it. If I was 24 and an extrovert and didn't have a job that required me to get up early in the morning, I'd be doing night game all night, every night. Right? Not now, but to my point. See here. Cool niching to women as a therapist be a good area for a man to pursue. That's not a niche. Our techniques in the find a niche course data driven. Yes, some of them. I've been watching Alex Jones recently, and I know you say he's deeply mentally ill, but do you think he's right about most things? Most things, no. Some things, yes. And he is deeply mentally ill. That's not an opinion. He is. If you don't believe me, watch those court videos he did. He was in court and he was not putting on a show. He's sick in the head. He's fucked in the head. Joe Rogan's is one of his best buddies, and he said this. He's got something wrong. Something wrong upstairs. Is there some things he says that are very right, of course. Most not probably. Seems like black guys who are cool and more alpha 2.0 seem to be hidden gems as people don't expect it. You have, have you noticed that? Women are amazed when black guys act more alpha 2.0. I have said. For many years, the only men, Western men, uh, no, any men, who have outgamed me for women, the only men who've ever done this are black guys who are chill. Not black guys, not like, yo, bitch, what the fuck? Not those guys. Those guys aren't going to do well. Black guys were calm, relaxed, well-groomed, dressed nice, quiet tone of voice. Hey, girl, how you doing? Those guys are killers because black guys are cooler than white guys. In terms of getting white girls and Asian girls, black guys who are chill, relaxed, well-groomed, not threatening, not too overbearing with the black guy thing, they're amazing when they do this. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. What do you meant you don't hit on girls? Lol, I don't get it. By hit on, do you mean ask her out? Bro, I have women all over the world. I have a roster a mile long. I don't need new girls. And if I need new girls, guess what? I do 100 pretty much these days referral game. I could just snap my fingers, ask for some referrals, and I'll get them. I don't need to hit on girls these days. But I've been at this for 16, 17 years straight. I'm in a place in life that is very different than yours. I'm in my 50s. I've done everything with women. Been with a lot of women. I'm not out picking up chicks at the mall. Okay? I'm too busy making millions of dollars, of, you know, important shit. I have a wife who looks like a Playboy playmate. I have FBs in multiple cities across the planet. I don't need more girls, which is, in my in my opinion, your ultimate objective. You're not going to hitting on, be hitting on girls all the time in your 50s. If you're in your 20s, go for it. 30s, go for it. You get your 40s, 50s, 60s. That's not where you want to spend your time. You want to build a roster of women by the time you hit that point so you don't need to hit on new girls. And you're not monogamous, so if one girl leaves, you don't cry for six months. When you said check right, left, and libertarian news sources, what are some examples of each that provide accurate reporting instead of clickbait propaganda? None of them, that's the problem, dude. None of them require, none of them report accurately. They're all clickbait. They're all liars. You get this piece from the left wing that is accurate. You get this piece from the right wing that's totally different and accurate. You get this piece from libertarian. You get this piece from the Guardian. You get this piece from New York Times. And you put them all together and you get the truth. They're all liars. They're all shit. 
they all suck. Or at least they're all biased, you know. Does eye surgery for older men work to eliminate reading glasses? No, it does not. It does not. That has to do with when you're young and you can't see shit. Um, getting older, you're fucked. I have that problem here. Here you go. I can't get eye surgery because I'm old. So no, it doesn't. What is the likelihood of getting an Armenian passport after three years of residency there? How high is likely? If you do everything correctly, <coughs> I can't give you exact percentages. I don't think anyone could. If you do everything correctly, it's well more than 50%. I would guess well more than 60, 65%, well more than that. If you do everything right, you can do things wrong. You don't just get residency and then do nothing else. There's a bunch of other things you got to do. At least 60, 65% of it, I would guess. How do you test your sales copy? A, B, split testing. Is showing receipts to other men hurt you in the long run or does it affect your relationship with women at all? Is showing receipts to other men hurt you in the long run or does it affect your relationship with women? I don't understand the question. Showing other men pictures of chicks I've hooked up with or video? I don't understand, all of which I have. Thanks for answering my questions. I own your products. Cool. Love it. I'll, uh, I got to go pretty soon here. It's midnight and I got to go night night. So a uh, few more questions and I got I to gotta roll. Sovereignceo.io slash MC. Put a WW in front of it if it doesn't work. Do people on is YouTube best for audience nurturing? And is it better to find clients through other channels or do people on YouTube actually spend money? People on YouTube actually spend money. Absolutely. However, it depends on many factors in terms of when they spend their money and what you're selling and what your branding is and all those, your niche. <laughs> so what I do, this is just Caleb. This is not the only YouTube business model. There are lots of the YouTube business models that work very well that Caleb is not doing. What Caleb does, just Caleb by himself, is Caleb gets clients from organic sources outside of YouTube, plus YouTube ads, plus Instagram ads. He gets the customers in the orbit, and then he gives them free YouTube content as a warm incubator, and then eventually those people buy. So my YouTube content, as of the last few months, earlier this year, I consider this as content from the warm audience. Stop giving a fuck about cold audience people on YouTube because that was not working for Caleb. I did a whole YouTube video on this because organic YouTube doesn't work when you have topics and niches that are not algorithm friendly, which I don't. There's a lot of topics that are very algorithm friendly we could kill on YouTube. Not me. It's weird how easy typos are in chat. I meant didn't keep friends. Oh, didn't keep friends. Okay, so what is your question then? I forgot your question. <clears throat> is YouTube's best for audience nurturing and is better? Oh, yeah. Can't answer that. Anyway, I get Paraglide residency cheaply. Yeah, it's one of the cheapest residents you can get. Join our program. Sovereignceo.io slash Paraguay GR. Or go do it yourself. Less money, but more time and effort. Just spend more time down there. Watch this in the morning tomorrow. Cool. Do you train students on how to master the tools and tech side of things in your nine-day business building program? No. No, we do not because that doesn't make you fucking money. We want to get you from zero to the money as fast as we can. Anything not conducive to making you money? No, we do not. Figure that out later once you have some clients. You don't need to be very technical in a business anyway. So we absolutely do not do that. The basics, like how to set up a mailing list, how to set up a web page, but that's easy shit. There's some, a few, but how to set up a PayPal account, okay, crap like that, but that's the shortest, easiest part of the of the curriculum. We don't go into detail on how to do a blog. No. Is Hong Kong still a good flag for living a business or is that ship sailed? Yes, it is still good. It will start collapsing very slowly, but it's going to be many years before a Western expat's going to see a big difference. Hong Kong's right. I'm going next year. Can't wait. Caleb, who do you recommend for in-person day game, night game like Tom Torero, who is offered to do business, who you offered to do business with for day game? I don't know. I haven't offered to do business with anyone. UMP Marcus? I don't know who that is. 
who are good in-person dating coaches. I've been out of loop on that. I'm not the greatest place to ask about that. I mean, I would say people like Tom Torero, who is dead, um, good looking loser who doesn't teach it anymore. Um, um, day game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. I'm just, I'm not part of that world anymore. I'm just, I wish I was. Actually, I don't wish I was, <laughs> but I'm just not. Do you still use Noom to help you lose weight? Noom did its job. I, I lost weight. And I'm not, I haven't gained any weight, which is a huge accomplishment for me. So no, I don't, because I, I know everything Noom teaches now, so not anymore. No. But I still recommend it. It's awesome. What do you think about the John Wick and James Bond series? James Bond is a fantastic series up until about uh, Casino Royale. After that, it started getting really shitty. The last James Bond movie was awful. It was depressingly terrible, of course, because all movies shut down. John Wick is the first three are fantastic. Fourth one is good but they're turning it into Fast and Furious. The last John Wick movie was good. I'm not saying it was a bad movie, but my God, every 10 seconds, he falls off a building or gets hit by a car and he just gets back up. The bad guys get hit by cars and they die. He gets hit by a car and he's just, he just gets right back up. And I'm like, what? Falls out of a building. It's happened several times. You're like, come on. So, But that didn't happen in the first one. Second one, the end of the third one, he fell off a fucking building and he was fine. Not fine, but he survived. So that's probably jump the shark. <laughs> the first three are great. I bought the email marketing course. I bought the email marketing course that would go good with 90 Business Builder. Are there plans to have the 90 Business Builder in the spring of 2024? Yes, sooner than that. We have some changes there. I don't, we have, they're not, I can't talk about it. The answer is yes. How do I get leads for my to buy my digital products, and how do I quickly scale this to four thousand a month? Thanks. Too general a question for me to answer in a quick answer like this. You have organic leads, you have um, direct lead gen leads that are free, like calling people, DMing people, and you have ad running ads. Those are three big topics. Do you have any citizens in Southeast Asia? No, because those are not as easy to get as the four I recommend. I have an OnlyFans management business. Would Romania be a good country to get residency to save money on taxes? Stop trying to copy Andrew Tate. Can't register my business in Dubai due to OnlyFans being banned. Oh, I know about that. Oh, I know all about Dubai and OnlyFans. Trust me. I have friends. I have friends in high places. Oh, yeah. Uh, stop trying to copy Andrew Tate. If you were 18 in 2023 and made 40 k a year, where would you live? Two general questions. I'm not you. What is your priority? What type of game did you focus on online day game? It's up to you. Are you 18? What do you like? Where do you live? Depends on what your party is. Is your party women? Is your party cost of living? Is your party weather? Is your party taxes? I can't answer questions like that. You're not me. Does Josh have a location dependent business? Absolutely. I guess so. If he lives near, absolutely. He follows the whole lifestyle I have. Yep, you damn right. The more than five years since pulled the ultimate online dating manual. That is incorrect, though. Not correct. I think I published it in 2020. So it's been three years. Have there been significant changes? In three years? No, there has not. Are there any far are there any far left wing celeb celebrity people, celebrities you enjoy, not just liberal but leftists? Sure. Um, oh, of course there are. I, I have to think for a few minutes. Um there's a journalist, far left-wing journalist, I like, um, Glenn Greenwald. It's amazing. He's a left-wing motherfucker. Love him to death. He's fantastic. Um, left-wing celebrities, all almost all Holly, almost all Hollywood A-list celebrities are left-wingers. That's just kind of a rule in that industry. So, I mean, yeah. Harrison Ford is a big left-winger. Right? I don't like him. I don't know if I like him anymore. <laughs> I mean, shit, George Lucas is a huge left winger. So Steven Spielberg is a huge, they're all left wingers. They're all leftists. You know, yeah, like them, sure. So, in my experience, that you need emotional control in order to be good at time management. Yeah, they are related. That can be true, correct. To some degree, you also need emotional control to set good goals. That's not true. No. What do you think about this? I, I think you're right on the first one, you're wrong on the second. I heard that real news comes from Al Jazeera. 
and the BBC. Well, here's the problem. They are less biased than the United States News. That's true. Al Jazeera and BBC are both less horrible, but they're still biased. They, are. I mean, they just are. It sucks. BBC is, are you kidding? BBC is a pro. Did you, did you see BBC interview Andrew Tate and Elon Musk? They were awful. They're awful. Excellent live stream. Thanks. You're welcome. Does having man boobs hurt your chances with women significantly? Well, I don't know. I got them a little bit. No. Significantly, no. A little, yes, which means you have to do everything right. So back when I was very, not very, when I was much more overweight <coughs> than I am today, years ago, I still got laid. The problem is I have to do everything right. You have no margin. If you're chubby or you're short or you have fucked up teeth, you have something significantly wrong with your physical appearance. And you go out and you know try to get laid and you know date chicks. You have no margin for error. You have to do everything perfect. You better be dressed perfectly. You better be groomed perfectly. Your first date game better be spot on, on point, one hundred percent, exactly perfect. You better be hundred percent perfect because that was me. I got laid, but I put on a lot of action. I was hundred percent perfect on everything. I didn't make any errors. Your frame better be perfect. Your outcome in the pants better be perfect. Really good looking guys have a wider margin for error. Now, they still, a lot of good looking guys don't get laid because they still fuck it up. So, but they have a wider margin of error than if you're chubby or whatever. You need to be on camera, Mike, during the sessions on the programs you provide for specific night ability. If so, how often? We recommend that you are on camera. You don't have to be. No, we do not. I don't tell anyone what to do. We recommend it. And Billy and the other coaches work, but we don't have to. No, you do not be on camera. You don't. Did you see the movie The Whale with Brandon Fraser? I did. It was fine. It's all right. In your dating, does it matter if she never texts you the first but always but always responds? <clears throat> um, that's not a good sign. You're probably bugging her too often. Your, your attraction is not as high as it could be. You want her texting you more often than you text her. What are your top five movies of all time? I'd have to think about that very hard. I if I if if it made sense to do a video, I would, but it wouldn't make any sense to make a video about that. Um, most important movie of my life is Raiders of the Lost Ark. The best movie of my life, which probably ties with that, is the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended version, all in, all as one movie, one 12 hour movie. And then maybe number two blows those two probably would be Terminator 2. I'd have to think about that. And so there's three of them. So should one be focused on improving emotional control first before time management or are both best worked on in parallel? It depends on how bad they are. If you're terrible at emotional control and terrible at time management, pick one. Maybe emotional control first. If you're just moderately bad, you can do both. How does sending a series of last call to purchase emails fit with the jab, 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 right hook framework? Those are exceptions because that's one day. So that's okay. You can't send those every day, but those are one day out of a week of emails or two weeks of emails. So those are, I do those. That's fine. Do you like any of the movies from A A24 Studios? Generally, no, they tend to be very left, left wing and shitty. So no. All right. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. SovereignCEO.io slash MC for all these courses. They're very super cheap. You get as many as you want. This got code lasts until... September 15th, which is the evening, so 11.59 p.m. EST is your deadline if you're watching the replay of this. And I have some cool stuff to plan for you guys over the next few weeks. Some really cool shit. Like some really cool shit. Stuff I've never done. Pretty cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, I have one more. One more question. I'll do one more. I'll go. How do you use content from sales books like by Brian Tracy? Oh, do you use content from sales books? like by Brian Tracy or Harry Brown, to craft a sales letter? Not really, no. That's more Dan Kennedy, J. Abraham-ish stuff. Gary Halbert, not quite Brian Tracy. Sales, yes, Brian Tracy, but sales letter, not really. All right, guys. Have fun. Bye.